8th of October last year, Spain's win away to Norway that confirmed their qualification. The draw was made early in December. Scotland found out they were in Group A with the host nation, Germany. And here they are, Friday, June the 14th, a cool night in Munich. Dark clouds overhead, Scotland captain Andy Robertson with the Scotland pennant in his left hand shakes the hand of his opposite number Ilkay Gundogan they exchange a brief embrace as well Andy Robertson captains his country for the 50th time and Pat Nevin what what I mean you you have played for Scotland at one of these tournaments but the sight for the Scotland players and the sound that greeted them and that national anthem out here on the field at the Allianz Arena that that is a small corner of Scotland that deep dark swathe of blue which dominates away to our left I know I wonder if it was only me as I have a few English people around me that was quite spine tingling I thought but it was quite moving um, and also quite moving the fact that the Scotland fans were really appreciative of the German national anthem but that noise this size of stadium this importance and the belief this is almost new for Scotland and that's why, as Faddy said, and as Chap has reiterated, it could be the biggest result in Scotland's history. But the thing you have to remember, there's still an outside chance, but we're going to hopefully have a go. For a Sutton, you've played in some big games, some massive stadiums, some incredible atmospheres. How does this rank tonight? Oh, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's up there with the very best atmosphere that, you know, I've, I've ever heard. There's such a buzz, such anticipation within the stadium, and now it's up to the to the players to go and perform. Scotland aren't in this tournament to make the numbers up. There's a belief within this squad, but they're going to have to do it the hard way because they're facing the host Germany on their home patch. Chris Sutton, former Premier League winner. Pat Nevin, former Scotland international, represented his country at Euro 1992. With us on Five Live, about to get underway in Munich coverage of all 51 matches at Euro 2024 on Five Live and BBC Sounds. This the first of them, and a long ball is driven forward by Mittelstadt towards the edge of the Scotland penalty area, and there's a couple of hacks at it uh, at the back there, and eventually it's cleared to the halfway line. So Scotland defending the goal away to our left with those thousands and thousands of Scotland fans packed into the end behind that goal that Angus Gunn guards. They're in the dark, blue shirts, blue shorts, blue socks, yellow trim on the kit. And Die Mannschaft, the German national team, playing at home here in Munich uh, in white shirts with the red, yellow uh, and black trim on the shoulders and on the sides of the shorts. Early possession for Germany. First break in play. I'll remind you of the two team lineups uh, as well. Rudiger's on the ball. He slips slightly as he drives the ball forward. Fitz is in. One on one. And Gunn comes out and makes a great save. Blocks with his chest. Early German corner, but the offside flag is up. It wouldn't have counted. It would have been checked, Pat Nevin. It was very, very tight. Scotland have played a very high line there. But I think he has just about offside. And they got it right there. Keeper couldn't take a chance with that one. Just out of interest, the way Scotland have lined up right at the start. It looked like a 5 4 1. But they knew they were going to get attacked right from the start. We'll see what happens when it settles down. Chris Sutton, you made the point uh, last night in our preview programme. You played with Brian Gunn in Munich. Made the best save of his career, you told me. Yeah, 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 he did. Massive game. Norwich City back in the day beating the mighty Bayern Munich. Angus Gunn, big save, albeit it would, been, it would have been offside. But Anthony Ralston took a chance there, got away with it. Right, here come Germany again. They've started well, they're on the front foot. Loads of exciting attacking talent. Wirtz plays it to his left. Musiala slightly missed controls. Little trick from him. Great tackle inside the penalty area is made by Ryan Porteous and his clearance is blocked and it goes out for a Scotland throw pass. If I was going to tell you one worry I had before the start of the game, and it's nothing against Ralston, but on that right-hand side for Scotland, he's limited experience, and he's against the superstar in the making that is Burks. On the left-hand side, Scotland get top quality players there. I think that's the way that Germany are going to try and get past Scotland from the start. So Scotland throw taken by Porteous. He's playing on the right side of Scotland's back three. McTominay, tall man, is up to win a header. The ball falls at the feet of Viet, heavily involved in the opening stages. McTominay puts a foot on it, knocks a pass up the line. He goes out for a Scotland throw. Chris Sutton. Yeah, I think we wondered how Scotland would set up in that midfield, whether it would be Christie alongside McGregor. It does look like it's McTominay. 
in that holding role alongside Callum McGregor. Christie narrow off the left-hand side, and McGinn narrow off the right. Shea Adams flick on, McGinn stumbles on his knees, he manages to uh, head the ball forward into the German half, then Mittelstadt goes down, McGinn has bumped into him, McGinn sort of shrugs, catches the ball, says, what's all the fuss about? And then very cheekily, as is John McGinn's way, just drops the ball on Mittelstadt's chest uh, as he's lying on the floor. Scotland team then, Angus Gunn in goal, Ryan Porteous, Jack Hendry and Kieran Tierney, the three centre-backs, defending to do for Tierney, up against Musiala, shoulder to shoulder they go, Tierney knocks the ball into the shins of Musiala and it goes behind for the Scotland goal kick. Andy Robertson on the left, Anthony Ralston of Celtic on the right-hand side, McTominay, McGregor, John McGinn, Ryan Christie and Shea Adams as the centre-forward. The blue socks of Scotland on his legs, uh, just halfway up the back of his legs, clinging to his calves. Angus Gunn away to our left-hand side, uh, waiting to take the goal kick. Manuel Neuer in goal for Germany. Kimmich Rudiger, Jonathan Tarr, Maximilian Mittelstadt, their back four. Uh, the bodyguard Robert Andrish in there to break things up. The destroyer win the ball and give it to Tony Kroos. Musiala and Wirtz either side of the captain, Ilkay Gundogan and Kai Havertz, who had such a stunning end to the season with Arsenal, playing through the middle, but there, Pat Nevin, we see, happy to drop back into the German half, looking to get in between uh, the Scotland midfield and defence. The intelligence he has as a player, I think, is formidable. I mean, if I was to talk about the players that expect to score more goals, I would put him up there in the tournament, because he's in such good form. Short, stocky Gundogan on the turn inside the Scotland half. Germany have lost it, Christie is there, plays the ball back to Robertson, drives it high, spinning ball drops midway inside the Germany half. Adams battles with Rudiger. Rudiger just lets it bounce, side foots a pass to his right, Robertson reads it well, he's on the charge down the left-hand side. Rudiger makes the tackle, looks pleadingly at the referee, but the referee, Clement Turpin, uh, points Scotland's way, throw in for Scotland, attacking position on the left. Five minutes in, in Munich, Five live and BBC sounds, Germany nil, Scotland nil. It's so frenetic, it hasn't settled yet, <laughs> has it? Um, but understandably, the Germans know what Scotland want to do, you know, get close to them and give them no space. So they've, they've started at a very high and intense rate. Scotland have managed to cope with it so far, but they've not really got their foot on the ball at any point so far. We respect everyone, we fear no one, said the manager Steve Clark. Long high throw into the Germany penalty area. Rudiger leaps, heads it away, Ralston. Wins a header for Scotland, Germany have a player down as they build an attack down the left-hand side. They're happy to keep playing, Mittelstadt looking for Wirtz, good strength from Jack Hendry, ran with him, just muscled him off the ball, plays it back to Gunn. Gunn clears with his right foot down the right, good strength from McGinn this time, nods it back to Ralston, Ralston takes the ball up to the halfway line, turns, plays back to Porteous, McTominay under pressure, very calm, just toes the ball into midfield, and Callum McGregor, as Chris was saying before the game, immediately sees the space, passes the ball out to the left, Robertson tries to thread it through to Christie, that was promising, it ends up in the arms of Neuer. Yeah, it was actually unlike Andy Robertson, good run from Christie in the left-hand channel, Andy Robertson just overweighted, the pass. Germany nil, Scotland nil. Tony Kroos with the sharp side parting. Back in competitive international action for Germany for the first time since they lost to England at Wembley in the last 16 at Euro 2020. His return has made a massive difference to Nagelsmann's team. The wins over France and the Netherlands uh, in March. Rudiger's on the ball. Jonathan Tara by Leverkusen is missed out in this move. It's across to Kroos. Kroos strokes it to his left to Mittelstadt. Wirtz plays a little one-two with the Stuttgart left back. Kroos again, just encroaching into the Scotland half. Shea Adams comes towards him. He teases him and knocks a pass to his right. Played out to the right by Tarr. Chip forward by Kimmich. Gundogan's in space here. Head to the Scotland area. Slightly loose touch from him. Robertson nips in, clears with his left foot. Christie tries to control it. Kimmich goes down, and Clement Turpat is not interested in that. And that's going to be a throw in to Germany on the right. Pat Nevin. Yeah, the referee had no idea <laughs> that should be given to them. And I don't think the assistant referee knew either. I mean, Scotland seemed to have a slight problem in the wider areas because the two wingers are actually going flying down time and again. And also, slightly higher defensive line than I probably expected for Scotland. And if you do that, you need to close down the midfield. All those Scotland fans in the dark blue shirts away to our left, wrapped with attention here as Germany attack down the right. Musiala makes the dummy run. Germany have lost it. Shea Adams is deep for Scotland. 
pushes a pass to his right, Ralston chases under the nose of Nagelsmann, overran it, out it goes for a throw, Wirtz takes it quickly, might have been a handball by Havertz there as he leant in to control it on his chest, Wirtz again, plays back into the midfield, here's Andrich, Robert Andrich of Bayer Leverkusen, cross comes in from the right, Havertz just tries to glance ahead of back to the edge of the box, McTominay stretches clears with his right foot, Mittelstadt lays it off to Kroos, Kroos immediately head up, looking for a white shirt in space, Andrich forward to Wirtz, laid off towards Kroos, didn't quite find him, now Kroos has the ball at his feet again, 35 yards out in a central position, Mittelstadt in space on the left, deep curling cross towards the far post, backward header, from Andy Robertson goes out yeah, for a throw in the It's actually a very narrow back five for Scotland. I think they're saying that, so Steve Clark is saying, do you know what, in wide areas we'll take you crossing the ball in and we'll have to deal with it. Do you know what are you slightly, Chris? Because I think uh, when you give Harvey a space from crosses like that, it's pretty special. Uh, here's Kroos, again, central position, about 40 yards from the Scotland goal. Rudiger to Musiala in the inside right channel. Kimmich at walking pace, level with the edge of the Scotland penalty area. Digs a ball back to Rudiker, here's Jonathan Tarr. Now Kroos just draws the challenge from McGinn, but McGinn gets a little foot on the ball there, which knocks it back into the Germany half, and Tarr has to go chasing. Tarr's low pass, skidding across this perfect pitch here in Munich. Down the right it goes to Havertz, who has dragged Jack Hendry and Kieran Tierney away with him. Havertz stays wide on the right-hand side. Tierney's right in front of him, intently watching the ball at Havertz's feet. Back it comes from Germany. Andrich across here to Tarr. Lots and lots of passing and possession from the home team. Wirtz pops up in space, and then Andrich through to the edge of the box. Havertz is back heel, intercepted. Christie prods it back to the edge of the box, and it's cleared away up towards the halfway line. Tarr heads it to his left, and here's Mittelstadt uh, against John McGinn. Yeah, and there's, a, there's a pattern emerging, though, isn't it? And the, and the worry before the game... Scotland have to get up the pitch, but it's coming back at the moment, wave after wave. Long diagonal from Kroos out to the right, Kimmich, low ball, Vitz with the drop, good save, Gunn, no, it's in off the post. Angus Gunn got a big right hand to the ball, but Germany has scored in the first ten minutes of Euro 2024, and this could be one of the stars of the tournament. Florian Vitz with his right foot, crisply struck, low to Gunn's right, Gunn did his absolute best to keep it out, but it goes in off the post. It's Germany 1, Scotland 0. Well, obviously, we've given so much space there, but they were getting, Chris has just said exactly the point. Scotland were going further and further back, they were going deeper and deeper and deeper, and if you start with a back five and they're not getting up at all, you're just inviting pressure, and that's what's paid off for the Germans here. It was a really nice first-time finish, but no one close to them when the ball was played in. Yeah, but I've got to say... Just wonder whether Angus Gunn could have done slightly better. Gets a good hand to the ball, goes in off the inside of the post. I think he'll be disappointed with that. The spot, though, Florian Burtz drifted late to the edge of the box. The Scotland defence had dropped really deep, drifted in. Ralston hadn't quite picked him up. It was a decent strike. I think Angus Gunn will be disappointed, though. Well, that's the danger. We knew it was there. We talked about it in the build-up to this game, and Florian Wirtz has scored his second goal for his country. So Scotland behind early on, but they're on the ball inside the Germany half on the left-hand side. Ryan Christie brings it infield, chased by a couple of German defenders. Back to McGregor it goes. Scotland just have to settle themselves and try and keep the ball for a little bit here. Good ball forward to Christie. Rudiger in with a strong challenge. Christie rolls over, picks himself up. Musiala with the ball wide on the right. Robertson nicks in, takes it off him, and Kieran Tierney plays back to Angus Gunn. I didn't even have time to get the scary stats out of the way. Germany, in terms of playing in the opening games of major tournaments, have played in seven and never lost one. Scotland have never beaten Germany in a competitive fixture. They're behind here in Munich early on tonight. The ball has gone out for a Scotland throw. The Nagelsmann celebrations as well were, were quite something on the sidelines. But the pressure he is yeah. undergoing into this tournament, you know, it would be a, a disaster if Germany didn't win uh, tonight from a German perspective. This is so big, they want to gather momentum and the, he's had the perfect start. Chris Sutton and Pat Nevin with us here uh, in Munich. So Florian Wirtz's goal has gone down as being scored in the 10th minute of this game. Germany have won the ball back on the halfway line. Tar threads one through to Wirtz. Wirtz, who's got the real look of a 
a proper street footballer uh, about him as well. Again, socks halfway up the legs, hair shaven short on the sides of his head, slightly longer at the back and, and on the top, popping up in all sorts of spaces. There's Gundogan, lays it back into the Germany half. Now Rudiger looking for the longer ball down the inside right channel. Havertz lets that bounce. Andrew's got to deal with Havertz here, tries to turn him, edge of the Scotland box. And Tierney is able to bring it away. Plays into the feet of McTominay. McTominay can't keep that. Germany away. Very back. few options for Scotland break out for the back. There's, you've got you've got Arnold's up up front, but other than that, there's no space, there's no day ahead of a player when you break out for the back and just lose possession again too easily. Uh, Musiala has now popped up on the left-hand side for Germany. Controlling this game, leading Scotland by a goal to nil. Five live and BBC Sounds, live in Munich. Munich invaded by Scotland fans. Thousands of them here inside this stadium. Thousands more in the city tonight. Watching, listening, wherever they can. Tony Kroos. Ball towards Musiala. Strong challenge comes in from McTominay. Scotland trying to win this ball back. Andrish into the path here. Musiala, edge of the box. Porteous spotted the danger, made the challenge. Christie lays it back to Robertson. Christie's then run into Andrish. He's been caught off the ball. He's gone down, holding his face. Scotland will get a free kick, Pat. Well, the, the VAR will look at this. I doubt it. I don't actually think it was deliberate. We'll have another look at it in a moment. But the, the work of... Well, he's not, he knew what he was doing there, didn't he? The bodyguard has body checked him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was pretty deliberate. Um, the, the thing is, the referee's not going to act in that. It's not enough. He, he knew exactly where the line was. That's actually pretty smart. But the way the Germans have closed down has actually been really, really impressive for, so far. Scott just do not get a second in the ball. And McGregor would like to start controlling the play. Can't go on. Impressive start made by Germany. Uh, this stadium hosted the first game of the World Cup back in 2006 and again the build-up to that tournament German fans not entirely sure how their team was going to perform under Jurgen Klinsmann Philipp Lahm scored an early goal in that game they beat Costa Rica by four goals to two that uh, lit up the opening day of the tournament got Germany going they made it all the way through to the semi-finals before losing an absolute classic uh, against Italy they lead Scotland tonight by a goal to nil McTominay inside his own half Sees Ralston in space on the right. Mittelstadt closes that down. It's played back to Ryan Porteous of Watford. Jack Hendry is the middle of the three centre-backs for Scotland. Across it comes to Tierney. Tierney fires it low and hard up towards Christie. Back to Robertson. Now Shea Adams wide on the left. Great build-up play by Scotland. And then Tierney's just lost it. He just put his head up there for a second. The ball got away from him and it was taken off his toe. 15 minutes gone in the first half. Here's Tony Kroos controlling things for Germany. Steve Clark calm as ever hands clasped behind his back in a smart dark suit just beneath us on the touchline here Jonathan Tarr on the ball for Germany inside the centre circle finds Kroos Kroos creeps forward into the Scotland half looking to his right lays it back to Tarr Tarr across to Rudiger here Scotland are chasing trying to keep Germany at bay Kroos again on the ball just inside his own half faints to move to his left to his right he goes, Andres is involved, across it comes to Rudiger, Christie goes chasing for Scotland and eventually Manuel Neuer gets involved, Pat Nevin. There was a few moments just before that when Scotland played it around the back, got the comfort of a few passes together but as soon as they lose it they're on the back foot again um, but they need to keep on being brave enough to do that because at some point Scotland will get a little bit of possession hopefully in the, the opposition half and if they do that the confidence can grow but they would like to do that before they lose another goal. Wirtz and Tierney battle for a high ball. It bounces off the uh, the pair of them. Last touch came off Wirtz. It's gone out for a throw-in to Scotland, just short of the halfway line on the left-hand side. The other two teams in Group A meet tomorrow. Second game of the tournament, 2 o'clock kick-off. Full commentary on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Vicky Sparks and Izzy Christiansen will bring you Hungary against Switzerland. Scotland play Switzerland in Cologne on Wednesday and then Hungary on Sunday the 23rd of June. Porteous' ball forward doesn't find Shea Adams, it does find Tony Kroos. Kroos passes to Wirtz, trying to flick the ball past Tierney on the turn. Wirtz gets another opportunity, lays it back to Andrish into the feet of Gundogan. Gundogan, central position, 45 yards from goal, plays out to the right to Bayern Munich's Joshua Kimmich, and then Andrish uh, back to Tarr. Germany in, in total control at the moment. Yeah, Scotland can't get a foothold in the game. 
at this moment in time. So Porteous there rushing a pass. See the way that they're set up, Scotland. They're, they're a flat back five. When the ball goes out to Ralston, see the German left back middle stat squeezing right up on him. Scotland not confident and composed enough at this moment in time to play out. It is a 5-4-1, isn't it? The problem is the four very deep. So when you lose it there, you've only got one guy up front. I think a big difference is, see, when you haven't got Billy Gilmore in the midfield, you can't play into that midfield as much. Because he will hold it with loads of players around him. Andrish ball through the middle. Angus Gunn's come a long way off his line, but he's made the right call. Ten yards outside his penalty area, catches it on the half volley, clears it high in the air. Christie battles for it, and it goes yeah, out for a I think he'll be throw. disappointed with the goal, but that was brilliant from Angus Gunn. I don't think he took a chance. I think he'd read that situation superbly. Otherwise, I think it was Vitz again who yeah. may have been in. McTominay trying to burst out from the Scotland half. The ball wouldn't quite come down for him. Shea Adams couldn't control it either. And back into the pattern of the game we go so far. 18 and a half minutes played in Munich. Germany won Scotland nil. Gundogan slides one through. Chance for Havertz, takes a touch. Back onto his right foot, lays it back here. Musiala touch, driven shot. Roof of the net. Nothing Angus Gunn can do about that. I thought the chance might have gone. And Havertz took too long. But he picked his pass. And the finish from Musiala was exceptional. It's a tough night for Scotland already. Germany 2, Scotland nil. You know, the high line that we mentioned earlier on there, Scotland really can't play that. They need a lot of more depth to it. Um, they just need one clever move, and there are a lot of clever players on that German side. There were three passes on before the final pass that actually broke the line there. The Ash looks really naive at the moment doing that, and it doesn't look as if that's the last time that's going to happen. You can see there's an inquest with the Scotland players there. That is not working. That trying to be a high line is not working at all because we can't get close to anyone in midfield. field got to say, Germany you've yeah, got to say the pass from, from Gundogan lovely turn uh, and then the pass to Havertz I thought he took an extra touch and maybe he should have gone first time he didn't on the edge of the six yard line he turned round and fed the ball to Musiala what a magnificent finish that was drilled in from ten yards into the top corner this could be a long night for Scotland so Germany 2 Scotland nil. Uh, Florian Witz and Jamal Musiala, the two 21-year-olds, the two goal scorers, and we're getting a close-up camera shot just after the goal went in of Callum McGregor and Andy Robertson deep in conversation, trying to sort this out, Pat Nevin. Yeah, you need to do it. If you keep on playing this way, by half-time, it could be horrible. Really, I mean, it's not very nice as it is up here, a Scotland fan. But at the moment, there's only one team playing any football at the moment. There's only one team in this competition at the moment. However... Will they adapt it? They look at their all the players are turning around and shouting towards Stevie Clark. They want to change something, they want to adapt something. It's just not working. But Ralston's an issue at, at right wing back. When the, when they're on the ball, he's very flat, and because he's flat, Middlestack can get up to him and put him under pressure. They need to be braver. Ralston needs to get higher when they're on the ball. It's easier said than done. That's why I asked the question the other night, Chris. I, do we play McTominay out there as a right wing-back who could do that job for you and stick Billy Gilmore in there and then you have to get people that are that much more comfortable in the ball? Here they come again, Havertz trying to race onto a through ball, gun quickly off his line, edge of the box, knocks it out for a throw into Germany who leads Scotland 2-0. And I've got to say, I swear the Germans have been, have been very good. We talk about the Scotland high line, but they've always had runners, whether it's Musiala, Havertz on that occasion, making runs in behind. Feels like Germany are laying down a marker at the start of Euro 2024. First game, live from Munich, here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Three more commentaries coming your way tomorrow. Hungary, Switzerland at two. Spain, Croatia kicks off at five o'clock. Ian Dennis and Dion Dublin with the commentary for you there. Italy, Albania is an eight o'clock kickoff tomorrow night. That game is also on BBC One and then England into action on Sunday, their first game, 8 o'clock kickoff against Serbia. That game also on BBC One, our commentary team, John Murray and Matthew Upson. So we're almost a quarter of the way through this game. Steve Clark stroking the beard is pensive. Scotland 2-0 down, Tierney plays forward, stadium feels rampant and, and bubbling. We've been talking all night about the Scotland fans in the dark blue shirts, mustn't ignore all these fans in the 
replica German kit sweeping around the stadium away to our right hand side Scotland have a free kick inside their own half they've gone to Hendry now Porteous Porteous finds McTominay under pressure plays back to Porteous here's Ralston closed down by Mittelstadt Mittelstadt comes through the back of him and concedes the free kick no one's got a second in a blue shot absolutely no one they've been closed down brilliantly we've been talking about Scotland quite a lot the Germans they have worked so hard they have, everyone's been good in the ball they actually look as if they've got four more players on the pitch at any one time. And when Scotland try and play along the back, when they've got an extra man or two there, they still can't get out with it. Not technically adept to get by that line. And it's all started by Habert's closing it down. Uh, Scotland have it again. Edge of their own penalty area. Porteous plays to his right. Mittelstadt breathing down the neck there of Ralston. Scotland get it up towards McGinn. Very rarely seen him on the ball so far in the game. Shuttles across midfield. Lays it off to Tierney. Tierney has space to bring this forward. He's made 30 yards downfield. Midway inside the Germany half. Looking for Shea Adams. Hopeful cross. Cleared away by Jonathan Tarr. Gundogan and McGregor go in for a 50-50. Foul by McGregor. Free kick for Germany, they lead Scotland 2-0. Yeah. I think Tierney needs to show a little bit more composure there. Tried to force a pass to Shea Adams on the diagonal. Shea Adams is never going to get it anyway. McGregor trying to win the ball back against Gundogan. Just gets the man. As well as listening to our Football Daily podcast throughout this tournament, the Scottish Football Podcast also available for you on BBC Sounds for all the news, reaction, analysis from the Scotland football camp. Sliding challenge from Ralston, doesn't get enough on the ball. Mittelstadt is there, fires the pass in, edge of the box. What a first touch by Musiala. Christian with the challenge. Musiala goes down, penalty for Germany. The referee points to the spot. The video assistant referee will have to check. Brilliant first touch by Musiala on the edge of the box. Christian with the challenge. Pat Nevin and Chris Sutton will have a look at the replays when we get them. Scotland captain Andy Robertson has come across to have a word with the referee. And Scotland at the moment, Pat, are caught in the headlights. It's a penalty kick. That will not be changed round. Um, it just wasn't quick. Feet weren't quick enough. Musiala is where. He's not caught the ball. And... It's a horrible moment that many people might remember when Germany played Brazil over in Brazil and it turned into one of the very, very ugly games, particularly for Brazil. And if you're Scottish just now, you're feeling the same. Right, information from the video assistant referees That's comes up on our screens. Checking if foul is inside or outside uh, the penalty area, I think Chris. the initial contact is from outside the area. It goes into the penalty area. Mussi, I've got to say... The touch in, in such a confined space was brilliant. He gets his body in, and Christie, he says he got the ball, he didn't. He catches Musiala's right ankle, but I think it's just outside the box. Well, Clement Turpin, the referee, pointed to the spot. We're still checking at the moment if the foul is inside or outside the penalty area. That's the message we're getting, but we're not getting any more replays of the incident. There were, there were two rather clumsy challenges, yeah. one from Christie, one from Tierney. But you're right, it's about the, the first, first one. Where well, the first well, it is, but it goes into the box. Yeah. Outside the penalty area, I think. Clement Turpin, what's he saying here? Yeah, Scotland fans are celebrating away to our left. So it's been deemed that the initial contact was just outside the penalty area. That must have been very, very tight. We've not got a great angle of it, but I'm sure just that first angle. Um, but even so, it's a very, very dangerous place. There could only have been millimetres in that. Scotland got a bit lucky there. The point you make as well, Pat, about that semi-final in 2014, and Steve Clark has made this point ahead of this game, you know, Scotland's aim here is to get out of the group for the first time in a major tournament. Now, you can do that with possibly even three points, but the goal difference then becomes hugely important. Exactly, exactly. Um, but at the moment, they've got a free kick which is so close, it's dead on the 18 yard line, millimetres out with it, and uh, if you're Angus Gunn just now, it's just going to be a sea of bodies and there's one or two that are quite good at free kicks in that Germany yeah. side. They've lined up the German players, there's four of them like a clock face. So there's four of them surrounding the ball at, at 12 o'clock, quarter past, half past and quarter two. Kimmich is standing at half past, Gundogan is there, Kroos is there and Havertz is there. There's some money on him. Yeah, I think. The money's on Havertz. OK. Chris? I think Gundogan's at 22 now. No. <laughs> 27 minutes gone in the first half. Germany leading Scotland 2-0. And Scotland fans just praying another one doesn't end up in the back of the net. Game still to come against Switzerland and Hungary, but a, a big, heavy defeat here could be hugely damaging. Havertz to the right, Kroos to the left, 
Kimmich standing about five yards away. Kroos then Havertz, the shot's deflected and it comes through to Angus Gunn, who was already down, diving to his right, and it rolled calmly towards him. Massive sigh of relief from those Scotland fans behind uh, the goal there. I mean, a third goal just now. It's frightening because at that point you need to be so strong than not to fold. And at the moment, Scotland are trying to be brave, but it's a hard, hard night. You just cannot get any touches in the final third, Scotland, at all. Rudiger defensively volleys the ball away for Germany. It's gone out for a throw into Scotland. Attacking position on the left, chipped in the air by Robertson. McGregor tries to chest it down. Christie's in there, he's lost the 50-50. Whacked away by Andrish into the Scotland half. No one's there. Is that the highest line you've ever seen? Scotland were 20 yards inside the opposition. Now, I understand why you're doing it there. You're trying to press the opposition, but see if they're quicker than you on the break. That's a very dangerous thing to do. Germany 2, Scotland 0. Musiala has the ball at his feet, but the, it's already gone out for a Scotland throw. On the left, 10 yards inside the Germany half. And Andy Robertson, the Scottish skipper, who at the moment is just intent on trying to sort of stem the flow of this uh, Germany team that keeps coming, sweeping towards uh, Scotland and battering away at the Scottish defences. Germany winning. Musiala, brilliant quick feet on the right-hand side. Wriggles out of trouble, still going. Steps away from McGregor, he's caught. Free kick for Germany. Blimey, Musiala and Witz have both turned yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. Key players, young players. Not good to win the experience, but Musiala, the little burst there, there was a clip on him. Free kick. He tried, to, given. he tried to stay up, didn't he? Yeah. Well, what a difference that is to see a player who does that now, after a brilliant twist and turn, great bounce, and then doesn't go down when he's kicked, he tries to stay up. Kimmich, ball into Gundogan, angle is tight for him, down by the byline on the right-hand side, takes Jack Hendry away with him, Gundogan is moving away from goal. Germany in control of this opening game at Euro 2024 leading Scotland by two goals to nil. 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Here's Gundogan, inside right channel, 35 yards out. Germany come back towards the halfway line. Jonathan Tarr to his right, to Rudiger. It's the German fans you can hear singing loudly at the moment inside this stadium. Kroos's ball away to the right. Kimmich trotting forward, midway inside that Scotland half, Musiala casually at walking pace, just gives it back to Kimmich, Rudiger to Tarr, Germany have got Scotland where they want them, Andrish and Kroos, the midfield buddies exchange a quick one-two at short range, there's Kroos, curling pass, bounces once, Kimmich controls, closed down by Robertson on the left, and here's Rudiger, Rudiger trying to knock one through the lines, half intercepted, McTominay, heavy challenge on him, just outside the Scotland penalty area, that'll be a free kick to Scotland, first yellow card of the game. Yeah, and Andridge living up to his reputation there, I think it's his third pretty reckless challenge. He, he, does, get, he does get part of the ball, but he gets part of McTominay again, unfortunately, for him. It's a brave referee, you know, he's actually let it run quite a bit, you know, there's been a few tackles thrown in from Scotland particularly, and, uh, you know, softer referee might have been getting his cards out earlier and showing them towards the players in blue. And Scotland are going to make a quite a, a noticeable tactical change here by the looks, I think. And it's coming from McGinn, who's now going a little bit further over left. Yeah. They're only, I think they're going to go for a 3-5-2, three, three, maybe. The looks of it. Portis is ball forward, header won by Christie, can't nod it to Adams, and it's headed back by Mittelstadt to the goalkeeper, Neuer. If you weren't listening to us in the build-up, German football expert Archie Rintut uh, told us that uh, Andrish, who's picked up the first yellow card of the tournament, has a tattoo on a part of his body of someone making a sliding tackle. Whether he gets the ball or not in that sliding tackle, in that tattoo, I don't know. Which which part of his body? <laughs> was it? Was it? Where was it? Was it on his calf? It was on his know, calf. I don't know. He'd be mischievous, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Mittelstadt plays to Wirtz, one of the goal scorers tonight for Germany, testing Scotland every minute of this game. Ball into the penalty area. Shot driven into the bottom corner, the whistle had already gone, it's a free kick to Scotland, it was Havertz who leaked to win the header. He only Mus used one arm. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing a replay of it now, Havertz up against Hendry, sort of hits his, his outstretched left arm as he jumps. But again, the finish was sure from Musiala into the bottom corner. If those chances come, Germany uh, are so going to take them. It's intriguing, you know, you're 2-0 you're down, you almost went 3-0 down, you're nowhere near in the game. And you can only say that they've changed the Stevie Clark's made positive. 
I mean, he's asked Christy to go much, much further up the field now, trying to get Adams a little bit of help. That should draw some defenders back a little bit. But it's going to leave a little bit more space in midfield here. But Scotland couldn't keep on playing the way they were playing. It was looking horrifying. Um, so we'll, we'll see if this latest change that Steve made is going to work. Long clearance downfield, clears everyone, and Jonathan Tarr is there just to nod it back to Manuel Neuer, who's not had a single thing to do with note yet this evening in a sort of lime green goalkeeping outfit splashed with orange away to our right 38 years old winning his 120th cap this evening Rudiger digs his right foot under the ball spin on that lands just inside the Scotland penalty area Havertz chases half catches Angus Gunn Gunn hobbles away and bowls it out to Hendrick yeah he actually does well there Gunn ball going through read it perfectly uh, Gunn's clearance first time Scotland can't hold on to the ball, it was meant for Christie, Germany have won it back, here's Kimmich. I think they're just going to be a bit more direct now, Scotland, with two up top, Adam and Christie playing close together. They have not been able to play through that German midfield, Germany suffocating Scotland. Steve Clark is scratching his head, we're inside the Allianz Arena, sometimes known as Das Schlauchboot, the dinghy because of the big plastic panels that make it look like it's wrapped up in bubble wrap, mm -hmm. changing colours all the time. Uh, Scotland who are sinking at this <laughs> minute, Bruce. I, I just wonder, Pat, half-time, whether... You talk about a change now, whether Steve Clark would think about going to a back four, getting James Forrest on a ball carrier to try and get them up the pitch, because in this first half, they just haven't been able to play through the Germans. The pro and the problem is the ball's coming to Ralston almost as a wing back, and then he's losing. He's he's been posted missing on the winger. You, you can't do that against a quality player he's playing against there. So it may well be that that is the case. A foot back four actually might suit them slightly better. But again, I think they will be changed at half time. German fans feeling incredibly comfortable. A eh? Mexican wave has started up. 34 minutes into the first half. Away to our right-hand side it goes. I don't think it's going to make its way all the way around the stadium. It's pretty half-hearted at best at the moment. McGinn is battling for the ball inside the Scotland half. It's pinging around. It falls to Kimmich, finds Musiala, lays it off to Gundogan, back to Musiala. Twisting and turning, Tierney's in his way, chip ball by Kimmich. Musiala tries to get onto it, Hendry nods it away. McTominay does well for Scotland. Holds on to it, plays to his right. Ralston is chased there by Wirtz and Musiala. Does well to keep it for Scotland. McGregor, sliding challenge from Gundogan, doesn't make contact. McGregor on to McGinn, quickly on to Robertson, gets his head up. Scotland with some rare possession inside the Germany half. Curling cross from McGinn towards Adams, who was trying to get away from Mittelstadt. Mittelstadt turns, fires the ball downfield, blocked by Ralston, high up the pitch for Scotland, and away it goes for a Germany throw in the I left think back position. A deliberate attempt to get the ball out to Ralston and close him down. Because every time it comes to him now, he's ending up getting the ball with two players on him and he's having to go backwards. And I, I think they know that he's one of the, the less experienced international players in the team. And he's been given a really, really tough time. But I think that's been quite specifically done by the Germans. Scotland very unfortunate, of course, uh, in losing two right-backs ahead of this tournament. And that's no disrespect, of course, to Anthony Ralston, who's out there playing at the moment. But to lose Aaron Hickey and Nathan Patterson uh, was real misfortune for Scotland. It's yeah, so, so difficult. Eight starts for Celtic in all competitions this season. Second choice to Canadian international Alistair Johnson, and then to come in at a game of this level and expect him to be able to cope, that's a, that's a tall order. Uh, here's Porteous, puts his thumb in the air towards Anthony Rousted, who made a run down the right. Porteous held onto the ball. Germany just standing off Scotland for a moment now. They're not chasing. Then Porteous fires that ball down the right, and Rousted was coming back towards him, and it's come straight through. But when they're Neuer. in possession, Gundogan is just shadowing McGregor. Do not let him get on the ball. Do not let him dictate. The Germans' plan has worked to perfection in this first half. You've got to say you're quite impressed with Nagelsmann. He's, he's taking Scotland seriously, seeing where the strengths and the weaknesses are and he's picking them apart at the moment. Youngest coach ever at a Euros, Julian Nagelsmann, 36 years old. Sleeves rolled up on the card. He's striding up and down the technical area below us on the touchline. Jonathan Tarr, one of his two centre-backs, plays to the other one, Rudiger. Back to Tarr. Tarr, right on the centre spot, looking for Veert. Scotland sends a chance to win it, they do that. Porteous plays back here to Ralston. Ralston, in turn... Back to Angus Gunn, rather nervy first touch, but he's able to clear with his right foot. 
Shea Adams goes down as uh, Jonathan Tarr challenges him and Scotland <laughs> do win a free kick, 10 yards <laughs> inside. The, the reason why I, I laugh at that is because I'm sitting one person away from one of the best I've ever seen at doing that particular little trick. What, what, what trick was that? <laughs> that was, yeah, the ball comes up and you back in, you fouled, back in. Is that a trick? Yeah, you, back, <laughs> <laughs> you back in, back in, the hit comes. Um, you know, if you get the foul, it's a foul. It's Dr brilliantly done now. Draw, draw in the foul, perhaps, Chris. Is that what we're saying? Uh, you were smiling think, as well. I, I watched you. will be hearing from my legal team. <laughs> Pat Nevin, Chris Sutton with us in Munich. Not going well for Scotland so far tonight. Opening game of Euro 2024. Austin McPhee, the set-piece coach, is out. This is a Scotland set-piece. McTominay, high curling ball towards the far post. Header won by Portis. Loose ball on the edge of the box. Gundogan mops it up for Germany. Left-footed ball forward. Wirtz comes speeding towards it. ralston has got to be careful there. But new Wirtz was there. Pokes it back on a half volley. Robertson gets a touch. Gets it to Gunn. Looking a little unsure there from Scotland. Forward it goes. Tar heads it away. And it's at the feet of Porteous again. Pass to his left. Tierney down the line. Takes a deflection that pass. Spins up in the air. Uh, Christie is trying to hold off Rudiger. Rudiger is all arms and legs and muscle and bustle and knocks Christie off the ball. And Germany played up the right-hand side. McGregor sticks a left foot in and it goes out for a throw-in to Germany just inside their own half. Seven minutes remaining in this first half. Uh, Musiala and Witz, the goal scorer, as Germany 2, Scotland 0. But it's been a wee bit better since they changed the system. I mean, I'm not saying Scotland are controlling the game, far from it. But it's not total domination inside their own half. Looking as if they're going to lose a, a goal every time Germany play one of those through balls. But uh, just a little bit better for Scotland, but every time Germany break, they are capable of creating a chance. Ball is back with Tarr again. Tarr leaps into a side-footed pass, plays it to Rudiger, the 31-year-old Champions League winner this season again. Fourth major tournament for Germany. Here's Mittelstadt playing in his first, winning only his fifth cap for his country. Florian Wirtz, clever little trick on the edge of the penalty area. Finds Gundogan, Gundogan turns 180 degrees, rolls it across here to Rudiger. Rudiger whips the ball in, but it's straight at Angus Gunn, and Gunn catches that and clings onto it thinks about releasing it quickly uh, and decides against it been talking about all the podcasts you can listen to during Euro 2024 match of the day top 10 podcast there for you again on the BBC Sounds app, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer Micah Richards, all things Euros, greatest games, controversial moments etc etc uh, headed away by Porteous, controlled by Tony Kroos Kroos just chips the ball delicately to his left, controlled by Mittelstadt. Mittelstadt's got Ralston in front of him, Wirtz in space just ahead of him. Wirtz has got Porteous backpedalling into the Scottish penalty area, dangles a right foot in front of the ball, teasing the Scottish defenders. Musiala with a little back heel in the pink boots. Germany toying with Scotland at the moment, leading 2-0, five minutes remaining in the first half. Tar again, Tar to Musiala, attacking position on the left for Germany. McTominay's in front of Musiala. Musiala plays it back to Tarr. And Germany come back into their own half. Pat Nevin. That's great game management from Germany. With just a few moments for Scotland. Got off the field. Getting in a more comfortable position. What did Germans do? Hold it. Keep it. Zip it around quickly. Ask the questions. They kind of suck that spirit out of that Scotland squad. It was just beginning to lift a bit. Oh, Musiala dancing forward again, swerving, avoiding challenges, keeping the ball. Kimmich, edge of the area, chips the crossing, headed down, Gunn makes the save, the rebound's missed, Gundogan's there. Heavy tackle on Gundogan, shots what. driven in, could be another penalty. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I think they'll look at that. I think it's a challenge from, I think it's, it's Porteous. He, he, do, he does win the ball, but he absolutely wipes out, I think, it's Gundogan. Yeah. Well, at the moment, it's gone behind for a corner. Julian Nagelsmann straight at the fourth official there, screaming for a penalty. We're getting another look at it now. It's his, it's his left foot that has some... Now, I think both players actually could be injured here, but his right foot clears it, and it's a pretty good clear... That's oh, a shocker, that's, that's a red card. Off. Right, yeah. Portis. Oh is going to get sent off surely and Gundogan is flat on his back and hurt I've got to say it's, uh, I've got to say you can't defend that challenge that's a disgraceful oh. challenge I mean, you, people will say well he's gone to block the ball that's a red car defence that's a leg breaker that is an absolutely scandalous challenge from Ryan Porteous 
not even a question over that. Not even a question. If he stays on the park, it's, it's a disgrace. That's horrifying. Well, both players are down at the moment, but Ryan Portis of Scotland, definitely the offender there. Now, Chris, early in his career, playing for Hibs, he got sent off quite a bit. Now plays at Watford, hasn't been sent off since he's joined them. He's panicked there, he's leapt in. It's a horrendous challenge. And we've actually just got to hope that Ilkay Gundogan uh, is OK. I mean, he's, he, we can see he's getting treatment just just for halfway up his shin. I, I actually, you know, you can say what you like. You cannot tackle like that in any era of football. It's it's a disgraceful challenge. He knows what he's trying to do. He goes so high. Two-footed. Two-footed. Yeah. Studs up. I mean, every single red flag for a red card is there. So at the moment... VAR are checking for a potential penalty. It says potential foul. Clement Turpin is jogging towards us. He's coming towards the monitor, but there's two things to decide here, and I don't think it's going to take too long to make the decision. The potential penalty, yes, and then the potential red card. Two-footed, straight onto the top of Gundogan's shin. Crazy challenge. Ryan Porteous has to go. Clement Turpin has seen enough. Didn't take him long. Points to the penalty spot. Now let's just wait and see, surely it is going to be a red card. Turpin marches purposefully and Porteous off the field injured at the moment. Turpin leans into his back pocket, he's going to call the Scotland captain Andy Robertson over as well to explain his decision. No decision to make really, it has to be a red card, it is a red card. It's a nightmare night for Ryan Porteous, a nightmare night for Scotland. 2-0 down against Germany, a penalty to come, down to 10 men, and we've not even reached half-time yet. Well, I don't get this, Pat. Why is Ryan Porteous arguing? There's, there's nobody in the world who you know, would accept that that is a reasonable challenge. That is an absolute shocker from him. Deserved red, easy decision for the referee to make. He didn't, didn't take long at the monitor. A couple of seconds, we all saw it. Shake of the head from Ryan Porteous, but that's that's ridiculous, reckless. Not even close. It's not even close to arguing that it's a, a strong yellow or anything. Now, Porteous, what he'll be saying is, well, I just tried to go for the ball and I just dived in there and I wasn't thinking, look, like, none of them are good enough excuses, not even close. Well, Scotland's tournament obviously won't end tonight. Big dreams, big hopes, big ambitions going pear-shaped at the moment in Munich. 2-0 down. Porteous sent off. The decision has been explained to him. But as Chris Sutton and Pat Nevin have been saying, he knows. He's just desperate to try and stay out there. He knows he's made a terrible mistake. And now Angus Gunn has a job to do. Kai Havertz. Four goals at major tournaments for Germany. The Arsenal man is going to take the penalty in his bright orange boots. Thousands of Scotland fans trying to put him off. Germany trying to take a 3-0 lead at the end of this first half destroying Scotland at the moment. Deep breath from Havertz. Referee Turpan just having a word with Scott McTominay on the edge of the penalty area. Then the whistle blows. Havertz with his hands on his hips at the moment. Stares at the ball. Jogs on the spot, comes towards the ball. Delay, sends come the wrong way. And Germany having it all their own way tonight. It's going horribly for Scotland. Germany three, Scotland nil. Portia sent off. Scotland down to 10 men. It could get a lot, lot worse. Yeah, uh, the nightmares that you have in the back of your mind if you're Scotland manager, we're all coming home to roost now, and every Scotland fan as well, but down to 10 men. You're not going to get a kick of the ball when you've got 11 men on the field. But on top of that, it's one of those nights as Havertz walked up there. Is there anybody in here that didn't think that ball was going to end up the back of the net? What a huge job Steve Clark's got to do at half-time. What on earth are you doing now? Yeah, he had the old sympathy penalty, didn't he, earlier on in the season for, for Arsenal. Kai Havertz was... And he has a little stutter with his run-up, goes down the middle. I mean, it's game over, isn't it, already? It's about Scotland playing for the worst possible <laughs> thing now, that's pride. We actually get a VAR explanation on the screen, it's disappeared. Uh, it was in the sort of football legalese, but I think we could all see what happened there, and I hope we've described it to you clearly tonight. Ryan Porteous sent off. Dreadful challenge. Ilkay Gundogan, thankfully, back on his feet. Germany 3, Scotland nil. Three minutes of added time at the end of the first half. Every, every, everything that, that could have gone wrong, Pat, pretty much has gone and wrong. Some of the decisions, that, you know, we've talked before about the decisions Steve Clark's made, I'm sure we'll talk about this at half-time. 
but you know, he, we'd have wanted to Grant Hanley to be on. You know, a player who's got a lot more experience at that level. He's went for Porteous. He's had some very good games for Scotland, but in the end, some of the decisions they've they've just not went. Not not to say that Scotland would have been any different to whatever they played. To be fair. Germany have been miles ahead in every single department. I don't want to be in a position where I said I, I told you so, but this sort of sums Ryan Porteous up as a, as a player. It, he's, he's got that in him, he's had that in him, he's gone to Watford. I think we're all hoping he's matured. You cannot do that at any level, at any stage, but when your team is getting a going over, as Scotland have done tonight, I mean, he's absolutely killed his manager there, his teammates. Andy Robertson for the 10 men of Scotland. Cross in from the left, and there's a foul there on Callum McGregor, so late free kick in the first half for Scotland. We're only at the halfway point in the first game of Euro 2024, but Germany already not being tested defensively yet tonight, but very much looking like contenders. No great surprise. Four times World Cup winners, three times Euros winners, hosts here in 2024. And that's an interesting ploy from Scotland. John McGinn standing on the Germany goal line, then jogs back from the offside position as the free kick comes in from deep, headed away to Ralston. Referee nearly got in the way of Callum McGregor there. McGregor did well, controls the ball. Half-time whistle blows. Terrible first half for Scotland and fabulous for the hosts. Goals from Wirtz and Musiala early on, the two 21-year-olds, as they pulled Scotland apart. Then Ryan Porteous jumping into the dreadful challenge as he panicked. Angus Gunner just made a save. There was a loose ball inside the box. Could have really badly injured Ilkay Gundogan. Thankfully, he's OK. Porteous sent off. Havertz stuck away the penalty. Scotland, Pat Nevin, in massive trouble. Any strength that Scotland have, uh, they can't be used today. Tierney's not getting forward. Robertson's not getting the ball on the left-hand side. We cannot hold that ball in the midfield. Um, I, I, I'd love to have seen Billy Gilmer on the field because at least he'll hold it. He'll take it in. He'll maybe give his possession. At this level, you need to hold the ball. And we haven't done that at all. We missed out. Whether that would have stopped us getting beat 2-3, 4-0 at the start of this game, because it could have been 4 very, very easily. Uh, I'm not sure I could say that either. The, the one thing you've got to say, I think the Germans suddenly, wow, going forward, they look a bit special. Those the thoughts of former Scotland international Pat Nevin at half-time. We'll hear from more from uh, Mr I Told You So in just a second. Germany 3, Scotland 0. Just for clarity, that's Chris. <laughs> so, so I made that clear. Um, here, here's, look, we can dissect all different parts of it. Talk about the ball, keeping the ball, having the ball. There's a, it's highlighted in particular with this. Tony Cruz's first 57 passes of the match were all successfully completed. By contrast, McGinn and Christie have both completed four. Yeah. That, um, that, is, that is the difference. It is the difference. I mean, again, I talked about we, we had Fadi on before, and James McFadden. We had a conversation um, earlier in the week that, um, about this, and both of us were really strong saying, you need Gilmer in there. And it'd be great if it's McGregor and Gilmore. Now I know the, the power thing, the smaller players, etc. But at this level, against technical teams, and this is a very good technical team, you must hold the ball at some point and get some sort of foothold in the game, or else you're chasing shadows. And the fact that we didn't start that, start that I just thought, and I know why Stevie's done it, because you, you the power of McTominay in there, that kind of helps. You need his physicality, all that sort of stuff. But at this level, you've got to be able to play. And we've not played football at all and we've not held the ball at all. I know, I know you're saying, Pat, about Gilmore. I'm, I'm not so sure the way that the, the Germans have, have smothered Scotland, whether he would have made such a difference. I think you made the point quite rightly. They've targeted Scotland's right-hand side. Ralston has looked really, really nervous. They've played as a flat back five. Well, every time the ball's gone to Ralston, he's got two men on him. Yeah. So I, I can partly sympathise with him looking nervous, really. Yeah, uh, but the, the, the longer... They, they are on yeah, him as soon as the ball exactly, goes that and, way. But the longer the half went on as well, Scotland were very, very tentative and, you know, they really struggled to get up the pitch. Hence uh, the change of playing Christie uh, closer uh, to Shea Adams up top, but then they have the narrow three in midfield, and the Germans have just gone wide. Mittelstadt at uh, 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 left back has had had loads of the ball, and they are so dominant. But just when you think, well, can Scotland get in at half time 2 0? What Porteous did, I mean, was absolutely scandalous. The challenge, he wasn't, he, he, you can have the argument that he was going to block the shot, 
but he knows what he's doing in that situation. He well, chucked only it. He, only, he chucked only, it. Only, only he will be able to tell us that. I think well, it, it, we, we it's horrible. It's horrible. it's horrible. He's going to block it, but it's horrible. He has only one job to do now. Apologise mm. to quite a lot of people, but particularly to Gundogan at start, but also his teammates, because his teammates now, you've got three games, right? And you're going to have to work hard in all those three games. See the players that are going to be out in the second half of your ch chasing shadows, you're going to be wrecked now. The, the effect you've had in this game is bad enough. You're going to have an effect in everybody in the game coming after that. It's, it's a nightmare sc scenario for everyone involved. Poor old Grant Handley's warming up now. Thanks very well, much, Steve, whacking me on at 3 0. Well, I think they thought he, he was set to come on straight away after the red card, and then and then the fourth official signaled three to Steve Clark. So I think they thought, let's just get to half time and then we'll, then we'll do it. In the midst of all of this, Germany have been great. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and and you could sort of you could pick out any one of them really if you want to look at it. But the sort of Cruz Gundogan axis, i.e., Cruz is in deep, Gundogan closing down further forward. The two two young ones in, in Verz and Musiala, th th they've been great to watch. I know if you're Scottish, I appreciate that, but from a neutral, they've been great. Oh no, to watch. I can I can yeah. absolutely well, yeah, admire yes. that. I absolutely, and I admire. The, the moments when Musiala was on the ball and running at pace, and can, you know, if you watch Eze, Eze he, he does things and he has balances that you think, well, wait a minute, that's a bit weird. <laughs> you should have fallen over there. <laughs> you, how did you keep on? But he does it, he's special, he's got that as well. Berts is such an intelligent player, so they know when to de you know, develop the spaces. Gundogan's finding little pockets in there is just joyous. And when the Scotland decide, okay, we'll mark him. I mean, that's just walks over into this space. So uh, the match intelligence is brilliant. Uh, yeah, absolutely right. They, they have clarity in the way that they that they want to play. They have clear patterns of playing. And we're talking about Scotland with the high line. And I think we all expected uh, Musiala and, and Vitz, they, they want to come off and get in those pockets. But what they've been very good at is stretching the game. You, we know what Scotland are trying to do. They've got, they had the back five, they had the four, and they were trying to condense the play so, so Musiala and Vertz couldn't get on the ball. But the high line, they've actually exploited that on numerous occasions. And, uh, I mean, they're, they're, well, I mean, what a start for Nargles. And, and, and to go back to how we started the half-time analysis, they have one of the games great midfielders who knows when to switch who knows when to put it behind the line who knows when to keep it simple I mean he he has dictated everything in that 45 minutes there's a big big fear when you've got Cross on the field don't give him space there's a lot of players like that over the years you think please do not give him space and then when he gets that space there you know it's going to develop brilliantly and if He's done, he's done it time and time again over all the years, but he's doing it today, and he must be sitting in that dressing room, licking his lips, saying, I'm going to have a party in the second half, because I'm going to get plenty of space. Yeah, I mean, he was maybe at a crossroads in his career, but a uh, good decision from him to go back to the German national team. Have you tried to do a pod there? Have you tried to do cross, cross roads? Is that what you've tried to do? I tried. To help me out. <laughs> Uh, Chris Sutton and Pat Nevin are with us. Not, not what the plan was for Steve Clark and Scotland. They are 3-0 behind to the house at half-time in the opening match of the men's Euros. We'll go to the US Open Golf second round. Not gone to plan for Rory McIlroy either. Details from Ian Carter after the latest BBC News. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Euros and the general election 2024. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The Princess of Wales says she is making good progress following her cancer diagnosis and will attend the Troop in the Colour to mark the King's birthday tomorrow. It'll be her first public appearance this year. In a written statement, Catherine says she's still undergoing treatment and isn't out of the woods yet. Here's our Royal Correspondent, Sean Coughlin. It probably is the most significant update on her health since that video message she put out in March when she revealed her cancer diagnosis. Um, and I think it really sets out, in some ways, the optimism, the sense of she's getting better, she said she's making good progress. But it's also guarded optimism, because it's couched very much with some caution around what happens next. Food manufacturers are recalling at least 56 types of pre-packed sandwiches, wraps and salads sold in major supermarkets because of possible contamination with E. coli. Retailers involved include Aldi, Asda, The Co-op, Tesco and Morrisons. It follows a recent outbreak of E. coli in the UK, which has seen more than 200 cases. 
The leader of Reform UK, Nigel Farage, says he thinks his party can get more than six million votes at the general election next month. A poll conducted by YouGov earlier this week suggests Reform have more support than the Conservatives, with both behind Labour. And Barclays has suspended its sponsorship of several music festivals this summer. The move is a response to a boycott by some performers over the bank's links to firms selling arms to Israel. Barclays says it was asked to step back by Live Nation, which organises Download at Latitude and the Isle of Wight Festival. On BBC iPlayer. Show me dance. Oh, this is so Britain. Your presence is requested by the Doctor and Lady Ruby. Come on. On the occasion of a formal gathering. Not a lord. Does not a lord have a name? Rogue. To aid in the fight against unsavory guests. I found them. They'll kill us. Then London. Then the world. Please respond with haste. Run. I'm normally the one that says that. Doctor Who. Let's go save this party! Watch on BBC iPlayer. Euro 2024 with Mark Chapman. On 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Second half from here in Munich to come on 5 Live Sport. Germany leads Scotland, 10-man Scotland, by three goals to nil. Let's go to the uh, US Open golf at Pinehurst. Uh, Ludwig Herbert is the leader, has a one-shot lead. He's six under par. Rory McIlroy was the round one co-leader, and he has dropped back a two-over par 72 for him today, leaving him on three under par. Ian Carter is at the course. What went wrong for McElroy today then? Well, you did say it didn't go to plan in the same way as it's not gone the way to, to plan as far as Scotland is concerned. I don't think he's in quite the perilous position that Scotland are in and he's still got all 14 clubs uh, for the rest of the tournament, Mark, <laughs> but is, uh, is 72. Uh, it, was, it, it was a battling round. He dropped a couple of shots early on, only had the one birdie, dropped a shot at the last hole, the par 3 ninth for a 72, so three under par. He's still very much in the mix here. He's three shots off the lead. Aubert's lead, by the way, is now two shots because uh, Patrick Cantlay had a double birdie he was sharing the lead at six under, but the eighth is proving a very difficult hole indeed. Aubert is on that at the moment. It's really testing stuff, but the Swede two under par for his round so far. And so he's two clear of Bryson DeChambeau, Thomas Dutrie, and Patrick Cantley and Matteo Pavon. They're all at four under par. It's been a fascinating day's golf again. Well, and because you have to in any tournament now, ask this question, where is Scheffler? Scheffler is, is sweating at the moment because he was round in 74. That's taken him to five over par. Really uncharacteristically ragged today. And that's what Pinehurst will do to you. If you're only a fraction off, it really will accentuate the problems that you have on the golf course. So he's currently at five over par. As it stands, that's the wrong side of the cut line. But I'm expecting it to drift and he'll have an early start tomorrow, probably making the cut on the mark. We'll have to wait and see but this course is not going to get any easier as the day goes on baking heat the greens drying out a real proper us open test uh, bob mcintyre has already done for the day isn't he he wants an early finish so he can watch the football he might want to start his <laughs> yeah. third round he, well if he gets he one miss because, the cut? no exactly he's had the he's had a right old day a 76 so at six over par i'm not sure the cut line will get that far um but he was so pleased with the the draw that he had which meant that he could play this morning be free this afternoon uh, i'm not sure he's perhaps thinking that right now <laughs> <laughs> ian thank you uh, very much ian and the team have uh, commentary of the third round uh, on Sports Extra at the conclusion of the cricket tomorrow night and on Sports Extra from 8 o'clock on Sunday as well. Speaking of the cricket, the co-hosts, USA, are through to the Super 8 at the T20 World Cup <coughs> after their match against Ireland was abandoned without a ball being bowled because of the weather. So it means that Ireland and Pakistan have both been knocked out as a result. And they are two big scalps for the USA team. So USA and India go through from this group. US cricket journalist Peter De La Pena joins us now, part of the Test Match special team. They're too big, I know the weather's helped them, Peter, but they're two big teams to knock out. It's unprecedented. And USA, the way they beat Pakistan, the momentum they generated off of that, 
the publicity they're getting locally. I mean, it's making mainstream news across all various outlets. And the support they're getting from that and the fans, I mean, even though today was rained out, there was still a lot of support in the ground today from first-time fans who just want to support USA. And it's been really remarkable to see not just the performance on the field, but the support they're generating off the field. So the fact that they are into the Super 8s, you're already saying that they're starting to get mainstream media coverage. That that will escalate, obviously. Everybody wants to support USA. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking about not just your local NBC, CBS news outlets, but you've had players interviewed on CNN, on Fox News, on News Nation. It's, it's straddling every aspect of American life and... That is just something I've never seen before. And, and the way the community is rallying around USA, whether they know cricket or not, all they know is this is USA doing well and they want to get behind them. Peter, thank you very much. Peter Della Pena, US cricket journalist, part of the TMS team USA, along with India, into the Super 8 at the Men's T20 World Cup. Uh, Germany making their way uh, back out here. Um, at some point it looks like they will make a substitution there uh, all their subs have been going through uh, warm-ups but Pascal Gross has been doing it in his kit not with a training top on or a bib on and in fact it looks like he is going to come on for the second half to, to replace the German who was on a yellow card which probably makes sense by the looks of it yeah initially wondered Mark whether it might be Gundogan having been you know fell by that awful challenge by Ryan Porges but Gundogan is straight back out there the German captain you're right Andres on the yellow card Germany already 3-0 up get Pascal Gross uh, into the midfield who's done brilliantly under Julian Nagelsmann there is absolutely no different player to Andres definitely but no drop in quality and Scotland have made a change as well. Uh, Grant Hanley is on, so with all the details and with the second half, back to uh, Chris, Pat and Ali. Shay Adams, uh, sacrifice for Scotland. Thank you, Pat. Spotted by Pat Nevin. Pat Nevin and Chris Sutton alongside me. Germany 3, Scotland 0. Scotland will play the entirety of this second half with 10 men. Ryan Porteous, I'm sure will be inside the bowels of this stadium absolutely devastated that he's led his teammates and his nation down with an incredibly rash challenge at the end of the first half second half is underway Scotland playing from right to left in the dark blue kits uh, against the host Germany uh, in the white shirts white shorts white socks uh, with the uh, the yellow and red trim on the shoulders uh, and short so I'll run you through the two team lineups again uh, in just a second Robertson's throw down the left Christie was running into space there's been a, a tangle there with Antonio Rudiger and Scotland have actually won a free kick in a, in a really good attacking position just down by the byline on the left early in this second half Pat yeah rather strange tackle there you know just almost dived at him uh, came a lot of push Scotland I know this is pushing out a bit, but their best chance of the game so far <laughs> because they can put a cross in and get some of the taller players up the back, Hanley coming on to the back as well. It'll be interesting to see when it settles down what system Scotland have fallen into just now and who's the furthest forward player. Uh, we'll figure that out in a minute. Right, Pat, you and I were in Seville watching Scotland yes. Tomano take a very similar free kick to this one where the angle was even tighter for him. I wonder if he might go for goal. John McGinn is lurking in Manuel Neuer's eye line at the near post. Now he jogs out of the way. McTominay from wide, driven in to the near post. Havertz gets his body in the way. Cleared by Germany. It'll go out for a throw into Scotland inside the Germany half on the left. I've forgotten to start the stopwatch, so let's do that now. Uh, how long have we had in the second half? About 30 seconds or so. So I'm just going to have One minute, 30 seconds. 19, 19, 19, One minute, 30 yeah. seconds. Thank you very much. 34. 35, 36. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Tierney waiting to take the throw. Angus Gunn in goal for Scotland. Grant Hanley has now come into the defence. Shea Adams substituted to so Jack Hendry and Kieran Tierney alongside him. Robertson and Ralston, uh, the wing backs. McTominay, McGregor, McGinn, and Ryan Christie complete the lineup. And Scotland have won themselves another free kick. Uh, early in the second half this one in a central position about 40 yards from goal Germany 3 Scotland 0 they've taken it quickly Scotland Tierney using his pace to go past Kimmich on the outside cut back into the penalty area McGregor stretches out a leg it wouldn't quite fall for him Musiala's going to dribble from deep here brilliant skill feeds it forward to Vietz Vietz running away from Scotland defenders Ralston hacks him down Ralston will be booked for Scotland free kick for Germany Chris yeah, Sutton he's going to be under all sorts of pressure now isn't he Ralston good break from Musiala slick pass into 
Fitz, who took the ball in his stride. And then around the halfway line, running at the Scotland back line. And Ralston running back behind him. Deliberately trips him up. Easy decision for the referee to make. Uh, that's a monster chance to take. You know, to take, basically take a yellow card there. I know they're on the break, though. But, you know, he's going to be put under pressure, as you say, just now. And Scotland cannot afford to go down at nine men. Right away, he's under pressure at the moment. Scotland defending. Ralston in that right-back position. Here's Gundogan for Germany. Just how much impetus is there going to be from Germany in this second half? How much desire to really pile on the pain for Scotland and try and rack up a big number in this opening group game? Manuel Neuer, the goalkeeper, has had practically nothing to do. Kimmich, Rudiger, Tarr and Mittelstadt, the back four. Pascal Gross at Brighton alongside Tony Kroos in central midfield. Germany knocking it around for fun at the moment. Musiala, Gundogan and Wirtz with Kai Havertz through the middle for Germany. Here's Gross inside the Scotland half. Kroos plays it to Mittelstadt. Christie chases that ball, but they're knocking it between the Mittelstadt and Kroos, and Christie's getting nowhere near it. No, I think uh, the system Scotland have settled into is like a 5-3-1 when defending. The more normal thing is to go 4-4-1, but that's the way it kind of started there. But when they get the ball, they try and get McGinn, etc. forward. But that might not happen too often in the second half. This is just going to be attack v defence, isn't it, in the second half? And Christie is the furthest one forward, but it's just going to keep coming back for Scotland. They've got to be brave on the ball. That's good from McGinn, though. Christie couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, McGinn's pass up towards Christie in the central position. Shea Adams now off the field, but Christie couldn't control it, as Chris says. Germany have it again. If Scotland do finish third in this group, then goal difference could be important. Six groups in the tournament, the four best third-place teams... Uh, go through to the last 16 and Germany leading Scotland by three goals to nil which is damaging for Scotland two games to come against Switzerland uh, and Hungary here's Tarr across to Kroos Kroos right in the middle of the Scotland half McGinn intercepts that pass and then runs away with the ball Gundogan points at the ball as McGinn goes down Gundogan says it was a clean tackle the referee agrees here's Musiala wide on the right for Germany, plays it back to Kimmich. Uh, this is going to be a tough watch for the Scotland fans inside this stadium now and really hard work for the Scotland players as well. Steve Clark's got to get a ball carrier on. He's, he's, he's got to get James Forrest on. He's, you know, deciding to go five at the back, but you've got to give that... You've got to give your defence a little bit of respite. I'd rather see him go with a, a back four and get Forrest on wide right, at least he'll carry Oh, Rudiger, there. long way out, hits the shot, and Gun goes sprawling to his right. He bounced in front of it, in, part, in front of him, he's palmed it behind. Corner for Germany, Pat Nevin. He always has one go, doesn't he, Tony Rudiger? That goes all the way back to his Chelsea days, where he'd smash one every, you know, on every game or two there. Gets that well. Bounce in front of the keeper, keeper goes across well. But at the moment, it's all the positives to say, bring somebody on to be a ball car, or bring somebody on to hold the ball in midfield. I've all got slight negatives as well, if you're going to leave space behind them. Corner for Germany, away to our right. Havertz making a run at the far post, running across the goal line. Delivered now towards the far post, no one there for Germany. Chasing hard here is Kimmich. Gets to the ball just in time, keeps it in play, plays it back to Gundogan. Corner of the Scotland penalty area, Mittelstadt. Cross comes in, Rudiger looks for the flick, the ball is loose and it drops to Robertson. Robertson's got absolutely no support, runs into Crows, fouled by Crows, does the only thing he could do there and wins the free kick for Scotland. His manager, Steve Clark, applauds. Five minutes gone in the second half, Germany three, Scotland nil. Every player knows that feeling, don't they? You're on your own. <laughs> you get three, four, five against you. And you can either have to hold it up or dribble or can be strong, but you know that they're going to outnumber you eventually. And it's trying to get a free kick or something to get teammates beside you. Robertson did it well there. Uh, Tierney's clearance there took a deflection. Germany have won it back inside the Scotland half. Musiala busy and buzzing again. Wirtz onto the ball for Germany. Scotland defenders backing off here. McTominay tries to hold him up. Across it comes to Gundogan. Little scoop passes beyond Kimmich. And behind it goes for the goal kick. Chris Sutton and Pat Nevin here with the commentary. They'll also be taking your calls alongside Robbie Savage after the game. The number to dial for 606 is 08085 909 693. 606 shows initially after every England and Scotland game throughout this tournament. England in action, 8 o'clock Sunday night. Full commentary here on 5 Live and BBC Sounds, the opening game for England against Serbia. 
don't. I'm, I don't want to be too negative in the second half, but I, I do not understand this from from Steve Clark and, and the and the setup. It's taken Shea Adams off. Scotland have a goal kick. Angus gone. Angus Gunn has gone long. The Christie as the as the centre forward. They're just giving the ball straight back to Germany. You, you have to try and get up the pitch. I'm not saying it's easy. Scotland struggle with 11 men, but when you go down to 10, you've got to be brave on the ball. But if they don't have a focal point, I don't know how they are actually going to get up the pitch, hence why I keep banging on about James Forrest. Sorry for doing that, but I'm going to keep doing it. No, we wouldn't expect anything less, Chris. Seven minutes gone in the second half. Germany three, Scotland now. How ruthless are Germany going to be? Uh, yeah, that's maybe the only major question left yeah. in this game. Um, and I'll, by the way, keep on going on about Billy Gilmore, because I think you need to hold the ball. <laughs> and you get the ball in a midfield, you need somebody who holds it and will play a difficult pass, zip one, two, a little tick attack and stuff. To, so who, to make... who, though, Pat? Well, it will have to be McGregor, because those two can work together, and I've shown it before, but, hey, that's easy to say. It's still no easy. It's not easy to do. Rare bit of possession for Scotland early in this second half. John McGinn on the ball again, just didn't have options ahead of him. Not surprisingly here, if you are just tuning in, Germany 3, Scotland 0. Opening game of the Euros in Germany this summer. Ryan Portia sent off for a dreadful tackle. Desperate lunge inside his own penalty area. Caught Ilkay Gundogan. That led to the third goal, the penalty from Kai Havertz. Ralston tackled, and it goes out for a throw into Scotland uh, in the right-back position. Pat, I had a lovely message from Roddy Forsyth ahead of this game, uh, who I know will be enjoying our coverage throughout the tournament. He won't be enjoying what is going on on the pitch at the moment for Scotland, but he was saying to me how desperately he misses, will miss, covering Scotland at a major tournament. We're delighted he's listening. We miss him, don't we? We do. Oh, I'm happy you said it. I sent a message back saying we miss you. Oh, well done. <laughs> but, but yeah, we all miss him. Yeah. Very good. I just thought I'd do mine on, on yeah, national radio. Easy way, easy way. <laughs> Let's hope he's still listening after the terrible first half for Scotland. Eight minutes gone in this first half. Thunderclap building around the Allianz Arena. Throw in for Scotland uh, on the right. Three more commentaries coming your way uh, tomorrow as the tournament really cranks into gear. Hungary, Switzerland in this group kicks off at two o'clock. Uh, Spain, Croatia, the first fixture in Group B. Full commentary of that at five o'clock. Italy, Albania. That looks a really good game, actually. Eight o'clock tomorrow night. Musiala... Uh, it was Gundogan, beg your pardon, edge of the box, tried to flick through his legs, didn't come off. Here's Tierney, brings the ball out for Scotland, can only see white shirts in front of him. Then Christie makes the run down the inside left channel. Tar has it covered for Germany, caught by Christie and wins the free kick. The problem Christie has, it's like they get a lone battle up there. Tar and Rudiger, they are <laughs> they're like rashes, aren't they? I mean, they're so robust and, and strong and powerful. It's so tight, he's going to get very little change out of those two. Just hear the faint strain of, of bagpipes somewhere inside the stadium at the moment. Cross into the Scotland penalty area, blocked and behind for a corner. I was given the German translation of bagpipes ahead of the game. You're going to love this, Chris Amp, actually. Doodle sack. <laughs> is, that, is that the correct word? That is absolutely bang on. Given to me by a, a fluent German speaker. I don't know whether that's... Der Doodle Sack or D Doodle Sack or Das Doodle Sack. Edge of the box, Pascal Gross hits a right footed shot. Ball spins up in the air after the block, and Callum McGregor hooks it away. I'm not going to use the German version. <laughs> I don't think it sounds as nice. <laughs> uh, here's Wirtz. Wirtz plays back to Musiala, the two 21 year olds combined. Kroos plays across here to Kimmich. Kimmich, 25 yards from goal, fancies it, low driven shot, blocked by Hanley. Headed away by McGregor, it's just relentless at the moment though, he comes back to Germany and forward they come again with all the passing and the movement, leading Scotland by three goals to nil. Ten minutes gone in the second half, here's the rangy figure of Kai Havertz, lays it off to Kimmich, across to Pascal Gross, winning his eighth cap for his country tonight. Tony Kroos uh, involved. They're winning his 110th cap. Musiala, good skill, speed as well. Down on the left, Ralston almost dived in, conceded another penalty. Cross comes in to the far post, volley just over the bar. On the half volley by Florian Beards. That is a goal kick for Scotland. Yeah, just down the left-hand side. They're just so dangerous every time they get the ball, and it's a tough one again for Ralston. He's against the top-class player. But you can't go to ground, and especially if you're on a yellow card and you're in the box. But it's easy to say that. It's hard to do it against a quality player like that. 
Um, and right at this point in time, the ball's out of play there, and you're just thinking, stay out of play for as long as possible, because there doesn't seem any route back right now. And I'm not, not being negative. I'm, what was the phrase that Stevie Clark used about negative Normans? Yeah. I'm not going to be one of them. Just being a real, a realistic robot. <laughs> Gunn takes the goal kick for Scotland. Trailing 3-0, down to 10 men, not conceded as yet in the second half, seeing very little of the ball, as you'd expect. Here's Havertz for Germany, back to goal, halfway line, lays it off to Gross. Tony Kroos looks interested, head up, springing forward, left-footed pass to Kimmich. Kimmich back to Rudiger. Lovely blend of experience and youth in this German team under the youthful coaching of Julian Nagelsmann. Tar. One of the less experienced players. There's Gross. Low ball to Musiala. Running at Ralston on the yellow card. Musiala darts for the byline. Looks for the cross. Gun blocks it with his left foot. Gundogan drives. That shot's blocked by Callum McGregor. Christie in to win a header. And it's volleyed away by Ralston. It's, it's brilliant from Musiala. What, what's, he, he's so intelligent. He can come inside or drive the outside. Drove the outside again. And Gun did well. Another cross comes in towards the near post. Han Hendry with a diving header gets it away for Scotland. McGinn flicks the ball over the shoulder of Kimmich. Goes to collect it wide on the left inside his own half. Kimmich makes the tackle. Germany have it again. What you would normally do if you're fullback with Rasmussen is having a really, really tough time. And I'll tell you a story later about another right fullback for Scotland to had a tough time once. Uh, what you do is you get your wide player or one of your centre backs to go over and help him. But when you're a man down, you can't do that. You've not got that. Scotland down to 10 men. Pat's just dangled the story there as well. So right back playing for Scotland, having a tough time, is that right, Pat? Right, I'll tell you, he's about 30 yards right in front of us right now as we speak. OK. <laughs> and he was playing against Ruth Hillett. <laughs> OK. Uh, here's Kimmich. Back to Rudiger. Forward to Gross. Back to Rudiger again. 10 yards outside the Scotland penalty area. Gross. Wide ball to Kimmich. Cross comes in. Diving header from Tierney. And he reaches the edge of the penalty area. Mittelstadt on his left foot off balance hits a shot. Blocked by Ralston. Gross for Germany. Passes to his left. Wirtz involved. 25 yards out. Dipping shot but doesn't dip enough. And goes swerving over the bar. And behind for a Scotland goal kick. Germany 3, Scotland 0. And the reason why I mentioned the Stevie Clark thing was just, we were playing against um, the Dutch. And they, they were a brilliant, brilliant team. And Hill was playing in the left wing and Clark was playing against them. And all I wanted to do, I was on the bench, all I wanted to do was get on there, to give a little bit of cover in front. And I'm thinking the same of Ralston tonight. Somebody's got to go and give him a hand. It's really unfair on him. He's been isolated all the time. He's getting no help at all. And by the way, no done him. He's stuck at it. He's worked his socks off. He's been so honest out there. But he's just getting two against one against him every time, whether he's on the ball or actually trying to defend the ball. It's a really tough gig. Uh, Angus Gunn with the goal kick, controlled easily by Mittelstadt. Scotland back off Germany here, Nicholas Fulkrug. Borussia Dortmund's centre forward has a fantastic goal-scoring record for his country, waiting to come on. Havertz stretches, nearly gets on to a through ball. Angus Gunn gets there just in time ahead of Florian Wirtz. Yeah, such a clever run from Havertz. The ball wasn't bad as well, and Gunn just about got there and clutched the ball. Wirtz had made the run as well. Got a little bit lucky there, Gunn. And Hanley didn't spot the run. Uh, highlights of the game tonight. Uh, if you're a Scotland fan and you can bear them and you want to see them, 10.40 on BBC One. Uh, on the iPlayer as well, look out for the, uh, the Euros channel. Special feature on the BBC uh, iPlayer. Plenty of good stuff to watch there. Here's McGinn, lays the ball back to Tierney inside his own half. Musiala makes it difficult for him. Forward to Robertson. Christie is trodden on by Jonathan Tarr. Tarr's going to get booked for Germany and Scotland win a free kick just inside the Germany half. And another little feature of our coverage here on Five Live. BBC Sounds and the Football Daily podcast during the tournament. The Deutsche Wörterbuch or Buch which is the uh, the German dictionary during the tournament. So Rick Edwards is going to come out with a German phrase every morning in breakfast. It's up to our listeners to try and guess what it is. Tonight's one, you could say, could be potentially apt. So, Go on, Chris. So Rick Edwards is coming up with this phrase. Well, I'm not, I think he might have been given yeah. the phrases. So Kai Havertz, it, yeah. sorry, Chris, is getting a standing ovation here as he comes off to be replaced by Nicholas Fulkrug. Havertz with his goal from the penalty spot. Another Bayern man coming on as well uh, in Leroy Zane. 
Florian Wirtz is going to get a rest. Let me get the phrase out for you. Have a guess if you want to. The answer coming in the Football Daily podcast, which will be there for you later tonight or tomorrow morning. I think Chris might get this one, but don't say it, Chris. Du bist besser als das is the phrase for tonight. Du bist besser als das. I think I've heard that somewhere yeah. before. Ryan Porteous might potentially be the recipient of, of that phrase this evening. Send off for Scotland. Five Live and BBC Sound. Scotland in trouble here because Kimmich is charging forward with the ball at his feet. Edge of the box. Plays it into Sane. First touch. Tries a clever finish. Doesn't get it right. It's a weak shot straight at Angus Gunn. Try very hard to go to fix Scotland. And they're trying to be as brave as they possibly can. And the problem is as soon as you lose the ball, you're in real, real trouble because you're going to get three against two against you there. And Stevie Clark had a bit of an argument with one of the individuals down you know below one of his own team and I think it may well have been the, the coach for the, the set pieces I think we were a wee bit too brave there with uh, that set piece John McGinn dragged down by Pascal Gross just to add to his frustration uh, and annoyance very much not going Scotland's way tonight it was always going to be a hugely difficult challenge one entirely sure what sort of German performance we were going to see Scotland haven't particularly helped themselves but trailing 3-0 against a very good team just puts the pressure on the other games coming for them in this group commentary on both uh, of course and both will also be available to watch uh, on BBC One I have to say I don't actually think we've seen Stevie Clark angrier than his entire really? time at, um, as a Scotland manager because he's usually so calm about it he's relaxed about it he understands there'll be good and bad things but at the moment he's furious down there so don't be surprised at a change or two very quickly 17 minutes gone in the second half Musiala plays it back to Kroos Kroos prompts a little pass to his left Mittelstadt high floated cross to the far post Tierney leaps high heads it behind and that will be another corner for Germany 18 minutes gone second half Scotland fans arms crossed silent away to our left a sobering night I wasn't sure there was going to be too much that actually could sober up the Scotland fans uh, in Munich today this performance by Germany potentially it Austin McPhee again uh, trying to make gestures here on the touchline as Scotland defend this set piece referee spotted something he doesn't quite like inside the penalty area so he's just blown the whistle to delay the taking of the corner John McGinn and Tony Rudiger Two men not backward in coming forward, battling. Little word with the referee, handshake, and they'll get straight to it uh, again. Corner will be taken by Tony Kroos. Away swinger with his right foot, header away from Hendry. Falls to Mittelstadt, he hit that cleanly, rising shot. Over the bar, behind for the goal kick. Germany 3, Scotland 0. A decent effort from Mittelstadt. Ball dropping, going to catch it on the half volley. That's a decent effort, I've just seen the replay, has gone 10 yards over, so not so clever really, but he's had a good evening, been a good outlet and a problem position for Julian Nagelsmann, yeah. left-back position. Need to find out what mind the windows is in German, actually, Chris, because that's your favourite one, isn't it? Chris and Pat taking the calls on 6.06 tonight after the game, Germany 3, Scotland 0 at the moment, line's opening soon, the number, just in case you don't know it, 08085. 909-693 Kenny McLean and Billy Gilmore coming on for Scotland so Pat you get your way we're yet to see James Forrest for Chris yeah. um, I mean as much as anything else you've got to give some of those players a bit of a rest for big games I mean the tournament hasn't finished for Scotland yet you don't want to run the legs off of every single player so we understand why he's going to try and make some sort of change and give a lot of that time to the likes of Gilmore and McLean. Yeah, Callum McGregor's number has gone up, John McGinn's number has gone up. Yeah, key players for Scotland. Don't want to do all that chasing in the second half. Big games to come. Switzerland in Cologne on Wednesday and then Hungary in Stuttgart a week on Sunday. Do you already have an answer for me, Chris, on Mind the yeah, Windows? I've just yeah. been scribbling down a little bit from my <laughs> German GCSE days. Actor Auf Die Fenster, I think it is. Actor Auf Die Fenster. I'm not, I'm not sure. Mind but... the Windows. A free kick for Scotland, trailing Germany 3-0. Scott McTominay waits to take this from deep. Powerful delivery with his right foot towards the far post. Rudiger there for Germany. Jumps with Hendry. Nagelsmann applauds. I don't think anyone got a touch on it from the McTominay delivery. It's gone all the way 
across the penalty area and out for a throw into Germany in the right back position. So 25 minutes to play in this game. Scotland conceded three goals in the first half. Portius sent off just before half time. No further damage has been done as yet. Lots of fresh legs out there for Germany. Danger lurking here on the right with Zane. Danger with this man, Musiala, threads it through. Gundogan might fall. Fulcrum! What an incredible shot that is! Lasers it in, rockets it in with his right foot from the edge of the box. Absolutely unstoppable. Germany four, Scotland nil. Even the substitutes are coming at him, lashing them in at the back of the net. That was a brilliant break there by the Germans. I mean, you know, no more movement you needed to make, just one touches. Zip, 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 and when it falls to him, he has no other thought. And uh, I mean, it wasn't even an easy chance. Was it slightly on the half ball, I think? And he has melted it into the top corner there. But isn't that a goalkeeper in the world that's going to finish that? Yeah, just nipped up in front of him. And I think he's caught it in the half volley. Yeah, brilliant hit. That's full for a full blast. I mean, what a hit that is. Oh, wow. I mean, he has absolutely mullered that into the top corner, hasn't he? Phil Krug is Phil Krug in those situations. Hey. They're both at it now. Chris Sutton and Pat Nevin with us here in Munich. Germany 4, Scotland 0. Very special finish, that one, from Nicholas Fulkrug. Robertson's cross into the Germany penalty area. Billy Gilmore gets a first touch. First time pass to his left, finds Kenny McLean, the Norwich man. Uh, back heel from him, tight position wide on the left, goes behind for the goal kick. Fulkrug, 12 goals in 17 caps for Germany. So not even the starter comes on and does that. He's a very, very natural goal scorer. And one of the problems if you're... I, th I think Germany were cruising up until then, and they make those changes there. And it is almost a fear situation because you bring a player on, he wants to make an impression. He wants to be starting next time. And uh, Phil Krug's shown that that's exactly the case and it's exactly what happened. So, with 20 minutes to go, it's already feeling like a long 45 minutes. It's going to be a, a very long 20 minutes to see how Scotland can get out of it without it getting completely embarrassing. Germany fans buoyant as you can hear watch out Euro 2024 here come the host Leroy Zane black number 19 on his back hair tied back teasing Tierney ball at his feet corner of the penalty area lays it back to Kimmich feeds Zane again two dark blue shirted Scottish players in front of him tries a clever little pass down the channel for Gundogan it's beyond Gundogan uh, and goes behind for the goal kick yeah maybe you and Nagelsmann that have been one of his toughest decisions. Up top, centre forward to start Havertz or full crook, full crook. People talk about him being an old fashioned centre forward, slightly different to Havertz in, in terms of he'll play up against the centre halves or back in. Good with his, his back to goal, but we saw in the Champions League finally. He did miss a couple of chances, but his movement in behind is pretty good as well. So a nice headache for Julian Nagelsmann to Hit have. Hit the post, didn't he, in the yeah, final? Yeah. Had a goal. Late on ruled out for, for offside as well. Has absolutely smashed one into the top corner tonight. Angus Gunn slips as he clears. Ball is flipped on by Ralston. Gilmore, impish figure in the dark blue shirt, battling for it wide on the right-hand side. Ralston giving it everything, blocks a clearance, chases Rudiger, play back to Neuer. He'll be happy to get involved for a second or so. Neuer plays the ball out to Kimmich on the right-hand side. Germany's next game against Hungary on Wednesday, 5 o'clock kickoff in Stuttgart. You know, Ralston has just gone and play, he's now the furthest up the field. Yeah. There's a massive, massive big gap. You need to have a control of where the players are in the pitch. And he's well covered there. So the person that was usually furthest up, Christie, spotted that Ralston and he kept on going. So he kind of filled in. Well done, Christy. Uh, lines open for 6.06 if you want to have your say on the game tonight. Bayern Munich fans have spotted Thomas Muller. Big cheer for him. A couple of fans on their feet. 15 appearances at the Euros has never scored for Germany. May not get a better chance than tonight against a tiring Scotland team. Fabulous goal-scoring record at the World Cup, but has never scored at the Euros. Shirt untucked, hanging loosely, hands on hips, waiting to come on. Lines open for 6.06. As I said, 0808 909 693 is the number to dial. Three more commentaries on the way here from the Euros for you tomorrow. Sane tries to flick it past Tierney. Tierney stands in his way, blocks the ball. Uh, 
gets it from Robertson now, Tierney clears with his right foot, Rudiger intercepts, Pascal Gross is there and flicks it back to Jonathan uh, Tarr. Football Daily podcast as well on the BBC Sounds app, uh, instant reaction to tonight's game, it'll be there for you later tonight, first thing tomorrow morning, make sure you subscribe, Kimmich's cross into the near post, Hanley is there, wins the header and behind it goes for a Germany corner, so... 20 minutes or so of this torture for Scotland remaining, and here comes the old round-deuter, Thomas Muller. Listen to that reaction as well inside this stadium. I think partly for Jamal Musiala, who has been fabulous to watch tonight. He turns a full 360 degrees, clapping his hands above his head to thank the fans, and Thomas Muller comes on uh, in his eighth major tournament for Germany. He equals Lukas Podolski's appearance record, now 130 caps for Germany, seven behind Miroslav Klose, still a full 20 behind Lothar Mateus. Quite a popular fella in here. By the way, classy action there, which I'll tell you about in a moment if the corner is taken. Yeah, corner taken short to Kimmich, across it comes to Gross. Back to Kimmich on the right. Germany trying to pull Scotland apart. Gross's diagonal ball to the far post, volleyed back across goal. Robertson sticks out a leg, off side flag goes up. Go on then, Pat. Um, Miller was just about to come on and all the fans obviously had noticed him and they were all he pointed at Musiala as if to say give him it give him it as he walks off he's been great today what a classy moment yeah. what a brilliant thing a footballer thinking about somebody else well done <laughs> Musiala and, and Vitz Chris have been a joy to watch haven't they for Germany this evening yeah I think that uh, that we felt they'd be key and, and Gundogan as well but so, so creative. They've rocked up this evening. It's been a, a diff, very, very difficult night for Scotland. Always was going to be, but when players are that ill for on the top of the game, they can cause any team in the world problems. Yeah, and they're going to do that throughout this tournament. Are oh, the hosts, Germany. Looking to spring forward again. Hanley passes out of the Scotland half, only as far as Mittelstadt. Flower of Scotland starts up defiantly away to our left a couple of Scottish fans have decided they've seen enough in this stand though uh, unless they're just heading out for another drink again I think <laughs> they're going to pop us, I'll be honest yeah, you're probably right Pat. you're probably right Germany for Scotland nil here's Gross tough night as Chris has been saying as Pat has been saying for the Scottish players that will give them some cheer support for them fabulous out here back home as well here's Muller on the ball curling cross with the left foot Fulcrew tests it down there's a touch there Gunn gets a hand goes over his head and Fulcrew eventually stabs it home the offside flag stays down Germany have a fifth Fulcrew will claim it and the Germany fans joyously celebrating again inside the Allianz Arena. Sorrowful night for Scotland, Germany 5, Scotland 0, if this goal is going to stand. Yeah, but no one's making any big complaints about it. Look at the Scotland players walking away there, so if they get away with it, this is just luck more than anything else. And they might just get away with this one. It's offside, isn't it? Yeah, they just, yeah. Yeah, we think Fulcrook just offside as he made the run in behind the Scotland defence. Angus Gunn nearly made a brilliant save there. Fulcrook tried to lob him. Gunn got a hand to the ball. Well, but they need to put 5-0 up. They're going to have to take that away now because the rate was offside. It's tight. There's a, bit, a couple of calls that went for Scotland in this game. I thought it could have been a penalty yeah. in the first half. Got away with it. That was just millimetres. And there wasn't a Scotland player who thought that was offside because everybody walked up to take the, the kick-off again. Uh, Scott McKenna's waiting to come on for Scotland, Chris. Yeah, I think it's one of those where, where I know what Pat's saying, and Tierney gets away with one there. Poor judgment on the cross. He put his arm up, I think, more in hope than anything. And Fulcrook, Fulcrook was just marginally offside. Right, Tierney's coming off, Scott McKenna is coming on. He finished second half of last season on loan to FC Copenhagen. Nottingham Forest player coming on as left-sided centre-back. Goal disallowed, offside. Germany's player number nine was in an offside position and played the ball before scoring the goal. There's the explanation for you on the screen. Yeah, myself in fact, I just us. told you that. Just call it. <laughs> but I'd like it officially confirmed. Chris, thank you. 
You need to have a degree in stating the bleeding obvious to work that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got it there. Yeah. Chappy put that in, or Chappy. Although, you know, there might be situations later in the tournament where the explanation, not for a simple thing like that, might actually be quite useful to us. So let's let's not let's yeah, not. You're right there. Let's actually. not jump yeah, into it. We, we we just moan sort of constantly. Any which way, don't we? Yeah, yeah but I'm not going right. to moan about VAR because they've had three big calls to make the night yeah. and they've nailed them all. Absolutely yep. nailed them all. Well done, VAR. You're allowed to say that. Yeah. So you are back semi-automated offside at this tournament motion sensors inside the match ball as well to speed up the decision making Germany enjoying possession of it again lines open for 606 Pat will stay on with Chris after the game taking the calls alongside Robbie Savage 0808 5909 693 ball into the penalty area Muller was making the run headed away by Scotland 14 minutes to go Scotland get a rare sight of the ball Christie plays it back to Robertson Robertson to McKenna, very careful with his pass back to Angus Gunn, beaten four times uh, this evening. Early one from Witt, he got a hand to, and it went in off the post. Thunderous strikes, though, from Musiala and Fulkrook, and brilliantly deceived by Havertz for the penalty. McTominay's foul there gives Germany a free kick wide on the left-hand side. So what do we think, Chris, we're going to hear from these, oh, hang on, Scotland fans on 6.06 this evening Germany back underway have a little think about that one or well, what do you want to hear what sort of discussions do you want to have as Kroos's diagonal ball is played to the feet of Kimmich Robertson shepherding him away from the penalty area Lawrence Shankland half centre forward waiting to come on for Scotland but Scotland defending again Gross's diagonal ball to the far post headed by Mitchell towards Muller cushioned header Robertson there hooks it away in front of his own goal knocks it behind for the corner to Germany, Germany for Scotland nil. Yes, middle set with the header back across, and I think Muller had the option of going for goal. He's trying to find his club teammate Kimmich, Kimmich, I should say, mm. Bruce, who'd made a run at the far post, but headed behind for a corner. Right, corner for Germany. Taken by Kroos from the right, delivery into the edge of the six-yard box. It's beyond tar. Forced to Mitchell that he's done it again. Half volley gets underneath it and crashes it over the crossbar goal kick for Scotland. You know, it is a hard skill, that. You know, it's twice he's tried it there in the half volley. But so could make the look there. really, really easy. Catching it absolutely perfectly. Uh, Emre Chan is going to come on for Germany. Late call-up to this squad. Bayern Munich's young defensive midfielder, Alexander Pavlovich, went down with tonsillitis. Tony Crow standing ovation for him. This will be his last football as a professional this summer retiring from the game great start for him tonight not on the score sheet no but a big part still to play in this tournament for germany they lead scotland by four goals to nil 12 minutes remaining in the second half reminder of our commentaries again for you tomorrow two o'clock hungary switzerland five o'clock spain croatia after ian dennis has had his session in the gym working hard at this tournament apparently that's true uh, Italy Albania kicks off at 8 o'clock the game's also on BBC One England in action Sunday night 8 o'clock against Serbia cross into the far part all oh, behind Gundogan who just got in behind Andy Robertson but behind him it goes and behind it goes for a goal kick to Scotland he actually just took his eye off the ball there uh, Gundogan all out on that left hand side coming inside on his right foot be a little bit behind him anyway puts a thumb up to Thomas Muller this is not far off Christie coming off, Shankland coming on. Steve Clark out to the edge of the pitch to applaud the efforts of Ryan Christie, ploughing a lone furrow, 10-man Scotland in the second half. Christie up front. Steve Clark's got a big job on his hands, Pat, hasn't he, next yeah. couple of days? He's got to find uh, some positive from somewhere. Maybe that's something that some people can phone in about. Yeah. Is there any positives at all anywhere you can get oh, <laughs> this evening? That's tough. I, I, I push I can think of one, but we'll leave that to the phone. In. OK. Um, Shanklin coming on is good news anyway for him. I mean, he, he would just love to get another cap under his belt. You don't suppose he'll get many chances here in the next nine minutes, plus what's ever added on. But it's a little chance to get a little bit of a runabout and get himself started in this tournament. Robertson making his way down the left for Scotland. Kenny McClay wriggles out of a tight spot, finds Ralston in space. Ralston able to get his head up, crosses the ball into the penalty area. Shanklin stretching for it. Billy Gilmore looks to get onto the loose ball edge of the box. Scotland have got to be careful that they don't get caught on the counter here. Chan 
Side foots the ball to Zane, still got that electric pace. Suddenly, through the gears he goes into the penalty area, tries to take it past McKenna here, can't quite do so. Two Scotland defenders now right behind him. They get the ball to Robertson and Robertson clears. McKenna did really well there, actually. Imposing figure, isn't he, Zane, when he gets up to speed, running with the ball, wants to come inside onto that left foot of his. McKenna stood his ground well, and eventually they cleared the danger. Here's Muller, walking pace. Thomas Muller wears the number 13 for Germany, plays the ball back to Jonathan Tarr, Rudiger. Then out wide here to Kimmich. Kimmich brings it in from the right-hand touchline, just short of the Scotland penalty area. Those Scotland fans, despite the defeat tonight, you know are going to be singing through the night. Sane swerving shot, well caught by Angus Gunn, right in front of his face, powerfully driven at him. Good save. And to be honest, we have to be, well, I have to be honest about this. They've kind of dialed it down a bit in the second half, haven't they, the Germans? Yep. They've no way that they've kept on going at the pace. And I don't think it's because they couldn't. I think it's because they thought, right, this is a tournament, this is tournament football. Put off the, the gas slightly here. And uh, it's delightfully good fortune for Scotland they decided to do that. Uh, because at the moment, as I say, is it, is it embarrassing? I wouldn't say so. Some people might say so. Um, but it could very easily have been so. Scotland fans will want to have a listen to our two o'clock game tomorrow because the other two teams in this group go head to head Hungary and Switzerland. Germany 4, Scotland 0. Just going back to what we were saying in the first half goal difference potentially a problem for Scotland going further in this group. Crossing from the left hand side for Germany. Chipped away by Ralston. Shanklin makes the run, can't. Uh, control it four best third place teams will go through in previous tournaments we've seen the likes of Portugal get through with uh, three points Northern Ireland uh, did it as well at Euro 2016 their goal difference was zero uh, one team got through Euro 2020 with a goal difference of minus one but that goal difference could be damaging for Scotland they could of course win the last two games that'll be six points Sane on the move again trying to dart through a little gap there Robertson and McKenna, McLean close that gap and it comes off Sane and goes behind for the goal kick to Scotland. Yeah, look, this game's done, we know that. It's, it, it's basically how Scotland recovers. Steve Clark, big on four points, can get us through. I, I just hope that this game hasn't dented the Scottish players' confidence too much. I think it has been embarrassing, Pat, I do. I think that uh, it, it was so flat. This is a, a Scotland team who look like they've really lacked belief. You know, going into the game that the Germans, you know, we wondered which German team we've seen and they've been very slick this evening. Sane speeding forward, left footed drive just over the crossbar, hit that powerfully, but again, rising over the frame of the Scottish goal and behind for another Scotland goal kick. Pat. You might see the clock it has to do is have to say, right, okay, it's not only, it's only our game. You know, if you win and draw, you still get a fairly decent chance of going through. Um, but on top of that, you talk about the, the goal difference. Germans play a bit like this against the Swiss and the Hungarians. They're perfectly capable of scoring a few goals against yep. them. Yep. We've yet to see if this is just because Scotland are very, very poor in this game or the fact that the Germans are really good. But it's also potentially, if you finish third, that goal difference will be compared to, to other, other groups, teams yeah. that finish third in other groups. But, again, that is, that is to worry about much further down the line. Kenny McLean... Caught oh, by Emre Chan. I was thinking more of us getting second place. Yeah, thank you, Pat. Thank <laughs> you, yeah. difference. Free kick for Scotland. Six minutes plus added time to go. Steve Clark has disappeared from view. Just uh, sitting down. Four minutes plus added. You've not changed the score. Oh, uh, yeah, well spotted. How about that? Start of the second half. Four minutes plus added time remaining. Thank you. No, I've, I've got my eagle eye on that clock. <laughs> I'm trying to get him back down so that Scotland don't lose any more goals. Counting it down. Uh, Robertson to take the free kick from deep for Scotland inside the Germany half. Ball inside the penalty area. Oh, headed in! Scotland fans have something to shout about. They've scored late in this game. The bouncing ball at the far post. Powerfully headed in. Scotland have a goal. The Scotland fans delirious away to our left-hand side. And Scotland have their goal from Scott McKenna who yeah. met that ball beautifully, flashed
crashing over Neuer's head. Germany 4, Scotland 1. I thought there was a deflection as well. I thought there was a massive deflection. Not sure that was going into the box, and I think it's come off Tony Rudiger. Um, and it's zipped past the goalkeeper there. And the Scotland fans, <laughs> they're going to enjoy this little moment there. At least they've had something that they can actually go and enjoy. And the one thing that was very noticeable there, they jumped up, they celebrated, and I would say about 3,000 pints of beer went flying. <laughs> that, was, that was what I noticed, Pat, the amount of beer being wasted. They're checking for an offside. Huh? But they do that every goal. Yeah, on our sure. screens at the moment, checking for potential offside leading up to a goal, but absolutely right. I mean, Antonio Rudiger's powered the head of home past Noy. McKenna did get his head to it at the far post, back across goal. Scotland fans waiting. The goal gets the all clear. Scotland have scored at Euro 2024. Antonio Rudiger with the own goal. Germany 4, Scotland 1. Just massages that goal difference a little bit. Uh, for Scotland as well. Scored in the goal that the Scotland fans are directly behind. It was almost a Mac hadn't scored. Yes, McRudiger. Uh, here is Rudiger with the ball at his feet for Germany. So, 89th minute of the game. Scotland have a goal. It's liven the fans up. They are singing again. Been well beaten in this opening game. Germany laying down a marker themselves at the start of this tournament and Scotland back inside their own half will that make Germany angry as they I, come I, forward I don't think Scotland have actually had a shot on target though no it's a good point uh, lines open for 606 give us a call after the game 08085 909 693 Kimmich is cross deep to the edge of the box Mittelstadt lovely control plays it back to Gross Gross into the feet of Muller you're not singing anymore from the Scotland fans to the German fans here in Munich. I hope they get the irony and the humour. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. 90th minute, Leroy Zane on the ball. Rolls the pass into the penalty area. Played back by Kimmich to Rudiger. Here's Chan with the jet back, jet black slick back hair. Mittelstadt on the left-hand side. Finds Muller. Muller's pointing. Looking for runners with the ball at his feet. Wide it goes again. Cross comes in. Full crook with a little flick. Gundogan was right behind him. Cleared by Scotland. Down by the byline on the right. Flag goes up for an offside anyway as Ralston clears. So Scotland will get themselves a free kick. Germany 4, Scotland 1. We're just waiting to see how much added time we are going to get at the end of this game. I mean, I want to enjoy a game of football every time I see it, but someone who's Scottish, it's been quite painful. And he's just put up three minutes there. And I'm not devastated by that. I will be absolutely honest with you. And I'm, I'm really happy for the Scotland fans. I mean, they have, they have been fabulous over the last few days here. They've come in such huge numbers. And they had nothing to cheer in the 90 minutes. Absolutely nothing. And then they're, uh, they are savouring this moment they're having just now. Uh, Kimmich with the outside of his right foot. Plays the ball back to the German keeper, Manuel Neuer, beaten this evening by a header from Antonio Rudiger, Robertson's free kick from deep, headed back across goal by McKenna for Scotland, headed in by Rudiger. Scotland on the ball inside their own half, next up for them, Switzerland, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock kickoff. mark the date in your diary, 8 o'clock, Wednesday night in Cologne, Pat and I will be there, full commentary on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. I've just thought a great second positive for Scotland. Yep. And this is pushing it. We've drawn the second half. <laughs> that's just... <laughs> that is pushing it. Yeah, 3-0 at half-time. Scotland then down to 10 men just before half-time. Ryan Porteous sent off all the reaction in the Football Daily podcast on the BBC Sounds app as Germany late on in this game, in added time, come looking for a fifth goal. What a start to the tournament for them it has been. Muller playing the ball back to Gross. Gross is curling cross, covered by Robertson. Flexes the neck muscles, heads the ball away. Kimmich chases that ball behind him, down by the byline on the right here. Germany fans leaning over the hoarding, so close to him away to our right behind that goal. Rudiger just shuttles the ball on to Gross. Mittelstadt plays it back to Gross, chased by McTominay. Rudiger on the ball again. Scotland fans, you can hear, singing at the end of this game for the three points. 
going Germany's way as Kimmich gets on the ball on the right, drags it back to himself. Zane, Zane, drops the right shoulder, moves infield, 30 yards from goal. Emre Chan to his right-hand side. Little ball forward to Ilkay Gundogan. 1-2 with Zane. Gundogan pace on the pass to Tar. Tar across to Zane as Flower of Scotland rings out again around the stadium here in Munich. Scotland players still chasing. They've had a real chase in this evening. Tough night for them. Zane's ball into the penalty area. Laid back to Chan. Chan's curling shot finds the bottom corner. Icing on the cake for Germany. Salt rubbed into the wound for Scotland. A fifth goal gloriously curled in. Germany five, Scotland one. You know, when they fancy scoring, they scored. And I think that's been the case the whole of the second half. So much for that win in the second half. <laughs> Didn't actually feel particularly serious about that anyway. Just shows you about the quality they've got all over the park. It's been a canter, an absolute canter for Germany. And they've done their 5 1 up just now. And they haven't broke sweat from minute one. Yeah, I totally agree with uh, with Pat. It's been it's been a real stroll, popping the ball around really nicely. Rhys Shane gets his head. I've got to say, I think the goalkeeper Angus Gunn should do better again. Goes down a little bit too late. Chan eyes up where he wants to put it. 22 yards out, finds the corner. Game over. Last action of the game. No more pain for Scotland tonight. Really difficult night for them in Munich. So many hopes, so many dreams, so much support coming into the tournament. It is only the first game, it was always going to be a massive challenge. But it has ended in a whopping defeat, torn apart by Germany. They've been beaten by five goals to one, not helped by the red card for Ryan Porteous right at the end of the first half. It was already 2-0 to Germany at that point. Havertz stuck away the penalty. Further goals from full crook and Emre Chan right at the end. And the one little glimmer of joy for Scotland, the Rudiger own goal, uh, which got Scotland on the score sheet. Two games to come for them in the group. Switzerland next on Wednesday night. But Steve Clark is going to have a big job on his hands to get this Scotland team back in shape for that one, Pat Neville. Yeah, um, a hugely difficult job. I mean, it was a retired, they, they didn't perform well. Um, everything went against them. Don't think tactics were brilliant either. And at this moment in time, when you've just got beaten 5 1, and the last thing you want to do is hang about outside in the pitch, there's no option now. The Scotland players have to go about those fans because they've been so brilliant. It's the last thing in the world you want to do, but you, you really should do it because they've been so brilliant. They're stuck by them, and those fans will be needed again in the next couple of games. They really will be needed again. Yep, look, the Scotland fans performed, the players didn't, they froze on the evening. They weren't helped with the ridiculous sending off of uh, Brian Portis. When I say ridiculous, deserved sending off. He didn't help the team. Uh, got to credit Germany for their performance under pressure coming into this tournament, but they smothered Scotland. They blew them away in the first half, and, and Pat mentioned they took the foot off the gas in the second half. I think that helped Scotland. It could have been a far wider margin than 5-1 in the end. Well, imperious from the host tonight. Those players gathered inside the centre circle. German fans standing around us, politely applauding. Fantastic sight, actually, of the Scotland players all together after this really difficult night, applauding their fans. And that wonderful sea of dark blue in particular dominating those three tiers away to our left-hand side, applauding the players and thanking them and telling them they'll be there again for the next couple of games. But a sorry night for Scotland in Munich. Opening night of Euro 2024, Germany 5, Scotland 1. And as Ali finishes there, the two head coaches, Steve Clark and Julian Nagelsmann, embrace in the centre circle. And that was quite a long embrace as well, maybe 10, uh, 15 seconds. Real feeling between the two of them. The Scotland players are still over in that left-hand corner. And the fans on the lower tier most definitely have a move. They didn't go early. They are still all there with their hands above their heads, applauding uh, their players there and away to our right. Same, exactly the same thing about the Germans, can't we, Pat? Look, I know they've won 5 1, but nobody is left there, and they're doing the traditional German respect thing between fans and players. Um, I mean, actually, both sets of fans have been brilliant tonight. Yeah, they've kind of really added to it because there wasn't a lot of tension in the game, to be fair. The, the tension in the game was how many? 
that was the only tension in whether Scotland could you know, survive without, as you say, being embarrassed. In Scotland, almost all of us have played over a period of time for the national team. We've had one of these. And it's how you react to it. I mean, I can remember a 5-1 against Portugal. And it was, it, it, I mean, Gallen Mikoski's leg broken that night. And it was, it was saying at the time, it was the day of the night a team died. And it happens. If you're a small nation, it happens sometimes. But you must recover the right way. You cannot afford to lose any belief you built up beforehand. And that's big for Scotland, what they do next. Uh, Jamal Musiala has been announced as the player of the match here in the stadium. All the Scotland players were just walking off. I was watching them. You could see the ones who always get asked for interviews at this stage, the good speakers, the McGinns and the McTominays, thinking, please don't, please don't. And the responsibility has gone to the captain, Andy Robertson, down there to do the post-match interviews. I'm sure we will play you a little bit of that in the next half hour, 6.06 on the way after we finish at half past ten. Let's just get an update from the second round of the US Open, Ian Carter. Joint leaders at the moment, Mark, with Patrick Candley having been joined by Ludwig Aubert. They're, they're at five under par. Aubert is one under par for the 11 holes he's played on this treacherous course today. Candley level par for his round, and they in turn are a shot clear of Mathieu Pavon, the Frenchman who's played 10 holes so far. Bryson DeChambeau and Thomas Dutrie are in the clubhouse at four under par. Rory McElroy's in the group at three under par. Tyrrell Hatton at one under par. The cut mark has gone out to five over, so Scotty Scheffler should be OK now. Tiger Woods at six over has to battle over the closing stretch. Thank you very much, Ian. Exactly 10 o'clock, here's Joe Critcher. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Euros and the general election 2024. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The Princess of Wales says she's making good progress in her cancer treatment and will attend tomorrow's Troop in the Colour to mark the King's birthday. She hasn't taken part in any public engagement since Christmas. In a statement, Catherine stressed her treatment is still ongoing. Our reporter Helena Wilkinson is at Kensington Palace. It's very clear that Catherine uh, wants to be there tomorrow to support her family. After tomorrow, we may see her at some events over the summer months, but it's only if she feels up to it, because as she has said in that very personal statement this evening, uh, she is still undergoing treatment, and in her words, she has good and bad days. Sir Keir Starmer says he's prepared to make enemies in order to grow the economy. In a Panorama interview, the Labour leader also says the UK can do better than the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson's botched post-Brexit trade deal. You can watch it on iPlayer. Food manufacturers are recalling dozens of pre-made sandwiches, wraps and salads sold at major supermarkets because of possible E. coli contamination. The retailers involved include Aldi, Asda, Co-op, Tesco and Morrisons. Our health editor Hugh Pym says health officials have given an update on the outbreak which began earlier this month. The number of cases they reckon is more than 200 and of those they've contacted, 40% or so have been in hospital or are in hospital, showing how serious it is. Now, the symptoms are quite severe diarrhoea, stomach cramps and vomiting. A man from Lancashire who regularly walked past the houses of his elderly neighbours wearing a balaclava or Spider-Man mask in what was described as an intimidating manner has been jailed for 18 weeks. Liam Bain from Longton pleaded guilty to harassment. And Barclays has suspended its sponsorship of a number of Live Nation festivals this summer, including Latitude, after some artists pulled out because of the bank's links to companies that sell arms to Israel. Barclays says cons- customers who hold tickets to the festivals won't be affected. This is where it begins, here. On BBC iPlayer, you'll find what you love. Here comes the cavalry. I'm Detective Sergeant Rebus. And love what you find. Oh my gosh, it's all come down to me. Who do I choose? Discover gripping thrillers. You serious? Yeah, it's looking good, actually. Or comedy box sets. Oh yeah, very good. I'll bring my kids, make a day of it. Live stream BBC TV. Unbelievable! And binge watch brilliant shows. This is good. We're going to have some fun. (laughs) The best way to watch TV. Push the button. (laughs) BBC iPlayer. Euro 2024 Deutschland. With Mark Chapman. On Five Live and BBC Sounds. And here in the Allianz Stadium, Germany have just completed 
uh, a lap of honour. And in fact, when they went past the Scotland fans in the left-hand corner, the Scotland fans applauded them as they went past. Bar one man who I could see suggesting to Thomas Muller that the score may have been 2 all. I think that's what he may have been suggesting. <laughs> but it wasn't, Ali, it was 5-1. No, we always knew this was going to be a massive challenge for this Scotland team, despite how well they performed in qualifying. I think the great unknown coming into the game was just how well were this German team going to perform. Well, they turned up and played brilliantly, 2-0 up in 20 minutes. Scotland just 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 couldn't live with them, didn't get a kick of the ball. Wirtz and Musiala with those first two goals, some of the finishing absolutely wonderful. The first one, Angus Gunn gets a hand to, palms it onto the post, it ends up in the back of the net. Nothing he could do about the Musiala strike. Th then came, you, you wouldn't say the key moment in the game, but once Ryan Porteous lunged in at the end of the first half with a really terrible challenge on Gundogan as the ball broke loose inside the Scottish penalty area. It was a penalty, it had to be a red card, and then it was just back to the wall. Havertz stuck the penalty in, and Germany in the end only added two more goals in that second half. Probably the best finish of the night from the replacement centre forward Nicholas Fulkrug, an absolute thunderbolt into the top corner. Scotland then got their goal, an own goal, from Tony Rudiger, just to put a tiny little bit of gloss on the scoreline, was scored at the sort of Scotland end of the ground, which gave them something to sing about there. But then right at the end of the game, Germany just showing their superiority once more. They are going to be contenders at this tournament. Emre Chan curling one into the bottom corner. Germany take the three points, thumping win, 5-1. Uh, Pat Nevin, Chris Sutton, James McFadden are with us. You just arrived to sit with us, James. You just sort of shrugged at me. What does that mean? No, I was d disappointing. I had high hopes for Scotland to go and be competitive. I'm not saying, well, I, I feel that Scotland at their best have a chance they, they can beat anybody, but they have to beat their best. And it's just, it was just a, such a, a disappointing performance. And you never want to see a team lose, but to lose in that manner, it could have been. It could have been a lot worse. Well, it could, could it have. Could've. There was one ruled out for offside. The referee gave a penalty in the first half that VL then judged just to be just outside there. It's not like Germany didn't have other yeah, chances. But they, well, the, the offside's offside. The yeah, penalty yeah. is at the edge of the box. Yeah. But they had one where the ball comes in. Havertz looked like it came off his shoulder. The referee blows his whistle. Musala puts it in the net. If he doesn't yeah. and plays the way it should be played, the goal stands because it looked to me as if it came off his shoulder. But Germany, Germany looked really good. They were surprisingly good for me because we know they're a good side. I mean, they've got good players but they have had their problems but Germany looked really good Scotland were, were so far off it Scotland got what they deserved tonight um, the, the other thing Pat which you mentioned just is the bigger picture of the game look the, the red card obviously means they were never going to get back into it they were already under the pump at that stage and you think Germany kind of took their foot off the pedal in the second half yeah to add to the, the chances we're talking about there the possible penalty kick that could have been against them the they, 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 they stopped for about 25 minutes and just passed the ball about it and didn't ask the questions because they're playing in a tournament and tournament football says you hold yourself back you don't put everything in all the time so you've got to take that on board as well that it could have been that much worse um, so generally nothing to worry about just now they're in good nick um, loved their, their work rate their work rate was fantastic also the intelligence of Nagel's men who sees where our weaknesses are and absolutely punishes them and destroys them and you know, Ralston's come in, he's not played that many games. And it, I'm talking about a good deal here, but it's, he worked hard. He tried everything he could. He was trying to go forward, maybe not at the right times, but every time he got the ball, it was two, three men going on him all the time. They knew where the possible weakness is, and they used it. That's good management. That's good team organisation. That's showing a real respect for the team you're playing against. So well done, all that. But for Scotland, you now look at it and think, right, OK, will you try that again? It was 5-4-1. It was. It was 5-4-1. Yeah. At our best, we had a kind of a 3-4-2-1. But we were 5-4-1 and we never get out of it after the first minute or two. And I'm, I'm not sure that works for us. And, and you could pick out any of the stats and they're, they're all quite damning, Chris. But because it was Rudiger with, with the own goal, which contributes the one, they didn't have a shot. No. Um, I mean, I think... <laughs> I think Pat and James have, have covered it pretty well. In, in a game, really, where the Scotland players had to, had to play above expectations and be near perfect, I've got to say, I, I, was, I was really disappointed because, albeit how well Germany started, I thought the first goal uh, Angus Gunn should have done better. That, that, was, that was a bit of a gift. But Scotland weren't brave enough. 
uh, for me this evening. And, and, we, and we, you know, we saw in the group stage, um, uh, the qualifying group stage against Spain, that they can play, they can be brave. But it was like they had an inferiority complex tonight. There wasn't one Scottish player who would have pass marks. You know, they were they were all below par, par, uh, uh, par. And that is the worry for me, because the question is, is uh, you know, they need to recover. But can they recover? Because that looked like that performance from Germany knocked the stuffing out of Scotland. And that's the worry. Well, let's get the thoughts of the Scotland captain. Here's Andy Robertson with Connie McLaughlin. Andy, talk to us about how much that one hurt tonight. I mean, it was a tough watch. I'm guessing it was even tougher out there. Yeah. Um, first half, we just got it all wrong, really. Didn't really show up. Weren't aggressive enough. Let good players on the ball. and. Yeah, they obviously had a game plan and we did and their game plan worked a million times better than, than ours but it wasn't because of the practice, it was because we didn't put it together on the pitch and when big occasions come like this you have to do that and unfortunately we didn't do that first half, second half, look we're down to 10 men, I thought the lads dug in really well to be fair to them and you know we lose a sloppy goal at the end but you know you could have drawn the second half but it's no consolation, we're well backed over here, we know that, we've got so many good supporters and yeah today was hugely disappointing but you're playing against the host nation and it's the first game and you don't get much tougher than that but we have to bounce back quickly because there was a lot of things wrong about today and we have to sort it for um, you know it's quite a quick turnaround till Tuesday yeah we spoke before about the step up from the games that we've seen you know in the, in the friendly games at the end of the campaign how do you do that really quickly to ensure that you get when we spoke about four points I guess that's still the target well maybe it's a reminder of how tough this tournament is obviously last time it was a lot different but this time you're playing against world-class teams and they showed that today their players their big players showed up and they were excellent all over the park and made it really difficult for us and had an answer for pretty much everything that we we had and um you know sometimes that happens but i think if we go in there and sit back down i don't think you know we've played to our maximum and you have to do that against the pot one teams you have to do that so we have to dust ourselves down we've got now five days to sort ourselves out and go again and it'll be another tough test against switzerland and We'll take tomorrow to be angry at ourselves, to be disappointed, and then come Sunday we have to be positive and try and go again. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Andy Robertson with Connie McLaughlin. I thought one of the interesting things there, Chase McFadden, was it him talking about things not being right. And in fact, we witnessed it to what, sort of half an hour into the first half. There, there did seem to be discussions between some of the players and Steve Clark in a, this isn't working. Yeah, well, I think that because of the, the way that Germany attacked, Scotland had to be mindful of that and at times they, they go man for man and that's fine because if you want to go and put pressure you have to you have to go man for man so you've got a spare man to go and press but they set up to press but didn't actually press Germany whether it was Rudiger or Ta certainly I don't think any Scotland player get anywhere near Tony Cruz the whole the whole time he was on the pitch and you would think that that's maybe what he's alluding to. You work on stopping, or you've got a game plan. Surely part of it was to stop Tony Cross because of how good he is. They, they couldn't really carry that out. I put that down to the probably the, the bravery and intelligence of the German attack to, to, to occupy the defence without even having the ball. And the runs that they were making were meaning that the Scotland midfielders were actually having to make recovery runs to try and get back to help out in that side rather than being brave enough to go and press and win the ball high up the pitch. Scotland just got it all wrong. Pat spoke about, you know, Nagelsmann exploiting Scotland's weakness. Not only that, they stopped Scotland's strengths massively. The left side is huge for Scotland. Maybe once or twice in the first half, Andy Robson killed Tierney linked up. Not again, because they were, they were nullified. Full credit to Nagelsmann. His, his game plan was perfect, and credit to his players, they carried it out brilliantly. Well, that, I mean, that is the other thing in all of this, Pat, isn't it? You, you know, they, they, they look... <laughs> to go overboard on the first game they they looked like one of the contenders for this tournament they immediately did, they did they kind of there was little bits of them reminded me of Manchester City you know the way pressed they're really really high and you must be able to play through them and if you play through them suddenly you have got space I think Scotland managed that once in the first half there was a couple of passes McGregor got it and moved it wide and we went up the left hand side and I remember it happening once you need to be able to do that a lot and you need to get people who are com comfortable in the ball that are able to take on the half turn um, we didn't have that in any way whatsoever because in every single department they were quicker they were better they were sharper and they understood it and the amount of times we, we were pushed to come out the right hand side and eventually 
we had to go all the way back and pass it to keep our head at long, ball lost. And they knew what we were doing. It was really simple for them. And we had no answers, as Andy Robertson said. He's got a job on his hands over the next few days, hasn't he? Yeah, he does. But I think Andy Robertson spoke about it. They've got tomorrow to be angry. And the players, are, he's taken that responsibility on that the players didn't carry out what the manager asked. Um, but they have, because five wins are... You, you don't want to lose any game, but in the manner in which Scotland lost, they, they have to pick themselves up. But they're capable of doing it. They've done it before, and I'm sure they can do it again. Is even... Sounds ridiculous. Does the last goal make it even more disappointing? Bear, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Bear in mind, the Scotland fans were all singing. They had an air of joy about them. They got one back. I know it was a known goal. It was 4-1. There's that sort of gallows humour, isn't there? And then Germany and Mexico go back up the other end. And, get, and it just yeah. you just go, ugh. It is because, you're, you're, like, the Scotland fans did. I certainly didn't celebrate the goal. But you're thinking, at least as a positive, we managed to score a goal. Then that, that fifth goal goes in, and it is disappointment. Uh, Andy Robertson, and look, it's an old cliche, and some people hate it. Go and draw this, don't lose the, the second half. I know Chris is going to jump in in a minute, and they hate it, but when you're coaching and you're in that situation, you have to give the players something to aim for, especially being down a man as well. It's, it's, well, it's horrible and also here sometimes. But also, if you do finish third, if you do finish third in, this tour, in, in these groups in this tournament, you know, the four best third-place teams go through, yeah. and the first decide and it is likely most of them will be on the same number of points, it comes down to goal difference. Well, it's happened to Scotland before where <laughs> they've been out in goal difference. Well. Um, so, yeah, it does matter. And look, Chris is still and looking at me in absolute disgust no, no, that not, I said no, that. No, I think it's no. just something to cling you, on to. Some trust sort me, of you, positive. you do get used to that. Oh, I do. I mean, I do. you know. He's still doing no, it. Look at him. Doing, no, I'm, I'm, just so, I'm so disappointed with, with the way that, that Scotland performed. But I don't... I love Andy Robertson as a player, but you can't... You can't cling to drawing a second half. I mean, they didn't draw the second half, but you can't. I don't. I don't get that. As oh, a, as a yes, you do. I, no, I don't. Yes, you do. No, no. I, yes, I, you I, do. I, no, I don't because the game is ninety. It's not whatever. to celebrate. It's just to no. But have I can't. A I can't. Glimmer. Have, I, I, yeah, a glimmer. You can't. You, but that that shows that you are. That that tells you you're so inferior. And, and yeah. look, we know Ger Germany are better players. But Scotland have good players. It's not like coming into the tournament, you, you know, we thought that, uh, you know, all the teams Scotland played, that, that Scotland would have the floor wiped with them. This is, a, this is a Scotland team before the game, Ali said about going into the unknown, and it wouldn't have been a great surprise. It wouldn't have been a total shock had Scotland got a result. I'm not saying a win, but had Scotland drawn tonight. But they were so far off it, so I don't, I don't find any positive. It's how they dust themselves down and pick themselves up after this but no no positives at all I have to admit I did say it during the game about the fact that we've you know drawn the second half with moments to go but I did say it with a laugh yeah. <laughs> I did say it I know this means nothing in the longer term but you have to try and take something positive if you humanly possibly can out of the game because remember you've got another one coming up and you need to have some sort of positive mindset James will go get Lee, you go, he can just stay looking disappointed at me for the last 10, 15 minutes. I might listen to him when I get in, <laughs> put it on the iPlayer, <laughs> when I'm in my bed. <laughs> James, thank you, James McFadden with us uh, on Five Live Sport. You know Steve Clark, Pat, you're a good mate of Steve Clark's. He's going to be hurting tonight. You said at times in the second half, I think, you saw him angry, then you've... Then, then you've well, you haven't, haven't seen them that angry that often. Yeah. What's he going to do then over the next few days? Um, he will look at the game again. He will really reconsider about the decisions you've made. He has got limited options in certain areas. The wing by position, we know he's got. Pro you've got a problem. What are you going to do about it? Now, I asked the question beforehand. You put McTominay out there. I watched Scott today. Actually, no, that'd be wrong. That wouldn't work. And actually, I said it to Chris beforehand, Chris gave him the side look. And I went, no, no, actually, you're right. <laughs> I wouldn't put him in there. The reason being is his feet aren't quick enough against a winger like that. Nowhere near it, right? So you can't actually do that out there. So you need to find wh what you're going to do in the next game. Because I'm making a promise now, especially we're putting somebody out there to try and get something out of that position as well. I also need, I, I really, I'm willing to put a few quid on the fact that Scotland's midfield next next game will be Gilmore and it will be McGregor because you need that ball you really need it Germany were, were, were very clever in terms of nullifying uh, McGregor Gundogan just just followed him about he couldn't couldn't get on the ball 
But, you know, we spoke about it before the game. Scotland have to get up the pitch. The issue is, on the ball, in truth, Porteous, not good enough. Hendry, not good enough. They played with a, with a flat back five. I mean, it played into, in, into Germany's hands in the fact that they could go and press Scotland high and they could lock on the midfield players and then you have the centre-halves who, who just love rashing any player up. I mean, it was so difficult for Shea Adams. But that was, you know, that was, that was a massive problem. Hence why, I know, it, it, he does have the option of playing James Forrest as a wing-back. And against the Swiss and against the Hungarians where you think that Scotland may, may be able to wrestle a bit of control in that midfield, that may be a good option for him. Oh, yeah, it's a possibility, but he actually going to go and play as a, f- a five across the back. And then you do want to see him going forward because I love him as an attacking player. And by the way, he has been brilliant at the end of the season for Celtic. He has been absolutely fantastic. But you're asking me to play right back at certain periods of a game against somebody, you know, like like those two wingers. That's a, that's a big call. Yeah, but, we, you know, you asked Ralston. Yeah, no, you've, but, you know, you're asking, you know, would James Forrest have done a worse job than Anthony Ralston? I'm not so sure he would. Let's turn our attention to the German side of things. Archie Rin took back with us. Uh, you heard him pre-match and also pre-match. We heard Julian Nagelsmann talking about Tony Cruz coming back into the international setup. But one of the things he asked before he came back in was, is there a chance of us winning something? And on that evidence, there most definitely is. Yes. But I think they were good, not great. There were spaces opened up by Scotland that I think they would have not anticipated to be there. Particularly, I think the first goal showed it, where the run of Gundogan takes away any player around Florian Witz for him to strike that. And that's a sort of luxury that they weren't afforded in the two friendly games that they've just had. That said, it was given what would have been going on mentally for them, because I thought in the first 10 minutes, I, th- th- there were a few simple errors being made by Germany that I think showed that they were also a bit nervous until the first one, until the second one went in. But overall, for Julian Nagelsmann, a perfect night in terms of, if there were possible debates that were ready to be inflamed in the German media, I would have said, Firstly, Ilkay Gundogan's performances haven't been necessarily getting much credit involved in four of the five goals. I think that Manuel Neuer didn't have to really do anything and had no chance with, yeah. the, with the Scotland goal. But also the way that Wirtz and Musiala, both 21 years of age, shone in the way that they did. And playing those two who are playing in very similar areas has been seen as a risk. And the way that that paid off in such style I think is probably his biggest win of the night Nagelsmann at the moment is just doing some post-match interviews on the touchline with German television and all the German fans are, are flocking towards that area and applauding him I mean Musiala and Wurz don't, don't strike me as two, two young players who are, who are going to be lacking in confidence but for a home tournament at their age opening match and Musiala also came into this with a with a little knee niggle as well didn't he so for them to have the performances that they did Pat and Musiala gets man of the match as well I mean that couldn't have gone better for those two no I couldn't have done um, one of the great things if you're a wide attacking player do you know what you really want more than anything else lots of the ball in the final third and they got lots and lots of the ball in the final third they were able quite a lot of the time to isolate the players they were against. The other dream situation for a wide attacking player. And it was so easy for them to get crosses, go by people. As we're watching a little replay here. And the ease in which they can get down into those dangerous areas was stunning. So as a wide player, it's the dream scenario. That that's what you want is what you got there. And then, then you have to do the business. And they did the business really comfortably. And I think certainly on the left-hand side there, they kind of knew they knew after the first if, sometimes if you go out to defend and you think right I've got him for pace and actually I can dummy him as well it's, it kind of almost gets slightly too easy um, but they, they both did it they both did a great start and I'm kind of well done them I hope they grow into the tournament I expect they will grow into the tournament and it does give you a lift if you start like that I know I keep going back over it but you can't you can't underestimate the influence and the importance and the experience of both Gundogan and Tony Cruz. No, absolutely. Cruz uh, coming back, uh, you know, as a, a, a masterstroke from Nagelsmann, really. When you, 
you know, football matches, you want control of the game, and he gave Germany that. I think, you know, the way Scotland played helped him, but Gundogan's experience, the way he moves, I mean, you know, his 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 turn and pass for the uh, for the second goal to to release Havertz, who who made a good run. There are some, you know, there's some there's some nice headaches I think that Julian Nagelsmann ha- uh, has in terms of, you know, full crook coming on and, Boy, he uh, hit and that, having, didn't he? Uh, well, having a having a. <laughs> He did hit that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, he absolutely full hit. I couldn't have gone any better. I mean, powered into the uh, to the top corner. But uh, you know, it's it's a perfect evening for the German team, really, because you know, to get up and running in a tournament like this, their confidence will go through the roof, and also the belief now from the German uh, you know fans across the board. They will they will start fancying the team, but. You you have to you have to chuck into that equation just how bad Scotland were. So I know Archie's getting excited and he thinks they've already won it, but there's still a lot well, of work. He, he, he actually said the opposite. <laughs> to be honest with Look you. at his face. Look at his well, face. He's happy. He believes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go after Chris for a second <laughs> time tonight. The point I was going to make was about Tony Kroos and actually how tonight must have been a slightly bittersweet moment for him when he's getting calls and chants from the crowd of Tony, Tony. And remember, he played here for Bayern Munich and he never got that kind of love. In fact, it was here that the seeds were planted with Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, the former CEO, and and Uli Hernis of him not being able to justify a wage that he thought he deserved. Off he went to Real Madrid and it went pretty well for him from there. But also Uli Hernis in recent years uh, helped, I, I would say, initiate a nickname which has, I would say, been against Kroos of Quer Pass Tony, which basically means playing it square all the time. And particularly on the second goal, I think it was, the ball that he played through to Gundawan, it was an eye of the needle ball. And th- that sort of impetus that he was able to give, and the way that Nagelsmann used him in that back three, which was far deeper than anyone was expecting it here how well that's gone what a night for him and on a night when i think only two german players names were sung that thomas muller as you would expect here was one but that Kroos is another i think he must be thinking oh now they appreciate me here for who i am what do you think and and you will be sort of across what german media may have been saying or broadcasting or talking about tonight or putting on on social media do you think they will be I mean, you've been measured in, in, in this performance and highlighting where Scotland, Scotland played into Germany's hands. Do, do you think they are going to be measured or, or is this just going to light the touch paper a bit? Germans are unbelievably critical when it comes to their team. You half German. <laughs> <laughs> I, for example, there was a question in the press conference before this about the first half that you played against Greece wasn't very good and, and going back over that like there is a a way of raking over coals here that even Tony Kroos after the Champions League final where Real Madrid beat Liverpool there was a famous interview here by a guy called Niels Carbon of, of ZDF who's actually here tonight for the public broadcaster where Kroos was upset at the line of questioning that he was receiving as being too critical and saying hey we've won it here <laughs> so there's your context I think that they will be very happy and relieved because don't forget they'd lost their first game in their last three opening tournaments and they really needed that to lift off the atmosphere I thought from the German fans wasn't great and that's something we've become accustomed to with the national team it's not as coordinated as your usual club fan support does it does it depend where they play at all I mean where, where I, you know, I don't have where they go next around but are they are they going to go to places where it might be a bit Stuttgart is next, right. and then it's Frankfurt. I think those two places will be a bit livelier. The atmosphere, to me, resembled a Bayern game against a team that they were expecting to beat with some of the nice applause that, that was there. And, but there isn't quite the same intensity to, I would say, the support in, in Munich, particularly from a national team crowd. It is a bit different. The, the national team has long been viewed as being too commercial, too corporate. And that's something that they're trying to tackle in in this year, in the DFB, the German FA, anyway. But wait a minute, Bayern fans think that the national team are too corporate and too commercial. German fans <laughs> overall, but but yes, that that extends, I would say, across the country. Yeah. 
<laughs> there, there is some irony in there. Archie, thank you very much for being with us thank this you. evening, and we will talk many times uh, over the tournament. We haven't heard from Steve Clark yet. You would expect him to be honest, wouldn't you? It can't be anything else, really, after that. It would look a bit silly if he tried yeah. anything else, yeah. and he's generally not too silly. Um, yeah, sum up the game. Try to just say, look, we need to start again. It's only, you know, only three points. If you, you lose, you lose. You move on. They're a very good team. Um, and we're still in the tournament. Uh, he has to say that, because if he says anything that's negative in any way, that filters through to the team. And remember, any manager's worth his salt. His first thought in any interview he ever does is straight back to his dressing room, because that's where it's going. Mm. So he needs to angle that back to say, right, bad day at the office, make sure the next one's a good one. And they, they also, Chris, you know, talked about, and Steve Clark has talked about before the tournament started, four points, four points. Yeah. You wonder because of the thumping whether they might need six. To totally. Uh, look, I, I think this is pretty simple from Steve Clark's perspective. Uh, privately, he will be so flat, so disappointed. But this is a game which, however bad Scotland were, he cannot overanalyze this. It's on to the next one. It's trying to wipe tonight's performance out of the players' minds and just get on with the next game, win that and then they'll be back in with a chance. Four points in the two previous Euros, which is where we've had the, the four best third-place teams, has been good enough. With, so any, with any goal difference? Doesn't matter. Four, right, yeah. four points would be enough. So in Euro 2016, Slovakia and the Republic of Ireland got four points. Portugal and Northern Ireland got through with three. Euro 2020, Portugal, the Czech Republic and Switzerland got through with four. Ukraine got through with three. So, so four points, regardless of goal difference, sh should be... I mean, we're only going on two tournaments. Should be, should be good enough. Uh, Scotland players, families just starting to make the way down to see uh, their players. They've all got their Scotland shirts on, and then with whichever family they are part of, whichever player they are related to, with that name and number on the back. So they are all making their way down, and some of those Scotland players have come out to see their families as they go down the steps in front of us. Steve Clark has said to television. Uh, Germany were outstanding and we couldn't match them. The end result is a disappointing night. The second half, we worked hard and managed to nick a goal. <clears throat> what we need to do is still in front of us and we need to focus on that. Now it's all about uh, reaction. Uh, we will have plenty more reaction to come throughout the evening. Three commentaries for you tomorrow uh, on Five Live Sport and BBC Sounds. Hungary, Switzerland at two. Spain, Croatia at five. Italy, Albania at eight o'clock. Uh, England, of course, kick off on Sunday and we'll have their commentary uh, against Serbia uh, from eight o'clock on Sunday evening. Chris and Robbie and Pat are on the way with 606 08085 uh, 909 693. They're the other side of the BBC News. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Euros and the general election 2024. This is BBC Radio 5 Live.